tonight on 8 out of 10 Cats. Super Comet, David Walliam. Supermodel, Jody Kidd. And their team captain, Jason Manford. And facing them tonight, he's a brainiac, Vic Reeves. We've hired him. It's Rafe. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Well, hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, the minimum pay for a prisoner in a British jail is £4 per week? They say crime doesn't pay, but it does. £4 a week. <laughs> The average German wakes up at 6.23 a.m. Well, it's difficult to sleep with all that on your conscience. <laughs> <laughs> and 40% of people use their mobile phone to cheat on their partner. I use Mr Tinkle. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason's team to go first. What stories have uh, people been discussing this week? There's a new show called Big Brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cutting edge. It's about people sharing a house together and then afterwards their lives are ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mikey. The blind one. Only thing is, he sort of he dresses up as a woman to be funny, and I think that's a bit desperate. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a disability on Big Brother, then you're assuming to win, really. I mean, Pete with his Tourette's, uh, Nadia had a penis. Not strictly a, <laughs> not not strictly a disability, but it is if you want to be a woman, right? So. I, I think... <laughs> I know it's early days, but I think uh, if Mikey doesn't win, I will show my ass in Primark window. <laughs> There's one interesting character, it's the albino guy, Darnell. Apparently, he got involved in gangs and crime yeah. in America. And I was thinking, if you're an albino, the last thing you should do <laughs> is get involved in crime. Because <laughs> you're always going to get caught, aren't you? <laughs> Even if you had a balaclava on with a tiny little eye hole. <laughs> That bloke with the pink eye, the albino. <laughs> and I was thinking, what if he was in a gang of albinos? It was just this <laughs> albino gang that used to come, sort of drifting like a cloud down the street. <laughs> when I first turned on Big Brother this year, I did think the house was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I like Don. Don? Which one's that, Vic? I don't know, I haven't seen it, but I just want to join in. <laughs> The other thing was that they got very upset about when the, the blind guy picked up the knickers, didn't they? Mm. He picked up some girl's knickers and she said it lacked respect. Did she have them on at the time? Well, no, the thing... <laughs> that's the thing. It would lack respect if they were in a knicker drawer, she was wearing them, they are on a laundry line, but she'd thrown them on the floor. If you've thrown them on the floor, technically, they're flotsam. Anyone can take them. They're actually, I think, legally, they're the property of the British Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, he's got a sideline, apparently, of selling Nazi memorabilia. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, we digress. Um, That's the whole show, is digressing. Uh, digressing. Okay. Okay. I'm not just trying to nail the answers and move on. <laughs> it's not a task. It's not a task. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, let's have a look and see Sorry. whether Big Brother is one of the most talked about things of the week. Big Brother is back. Bullying Alex is now officially the most hated housemate in history. On hearing the news, Nasty Nick went out and drop-kicked a kitten into an orphan's face. <laughs> Sean, Vic, Rafe, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I guess on the topic of reality television, uh, Lee, that's what I'm talking about, McQueen winning The Apprentice. He doesn't... Uh, he's never said that's what I'm talking about. No. He says, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did you watch any of The Apprentice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never had my finger away from the button where, where it was on. <laughs> <laughs> I like Don. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
the thing I like best about Sarana Sugar is he, he's mental, clearly he's mental. Because he always he brings them together, he goes, right, you're probably wondering why we're at the Tate Modern. That's right, we're making fudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably wondering why we're at Duxford Air Museum. That's right, children's coffins. <laughs> it's all part of his policy to try and intimidate. Yeah, and why did you have to do everything on a weird fax phone? You had, you had to make all the phone calls in the series, using, like that, using... Using a normal telephone with the loudspeaker function switched on. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible when twins fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little bit unnerved by uh, Nick and Margaret always like hiding behind plant pots, <laughs> just taking notes. <them out. laughs> and even when it was something they didn't even care about, like you could be washing cars and they'd be going. <laughs> what were you doing before you were on The Apprentice? I thought he was the Ents officer in an eight and a half hot bum. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it might just be me. You know, sometimes grammatical things annoy you. His catchphrase is "You're fired," yet you haven't got the job yet. So, he, really, it shouldn't be you're fired, cos it's about trying to get the job. It should be you you're not on The Apprentice show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should be. You're right, of course. It's a bit like... Thank you. <laughs> it's a bit like... You remember Bruce Forsyth's catchphrase was, nice to see you, to see you nice. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what it should be is, nice to see you. No, really, it's nice to see you. <laughs> it's the same That's why problem. he's never going to get fucking anywhere, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see whether The Apprentice is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> so it is the fifth most talked about thing this week. <laughs> yes, The Apprentice ended this week. Tragically, due to a mix-up at the BBC, the winner of The Apprentice is going to be playing Nancy in a West End production of Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, Jody, David, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Hillary Clinton, would you think? Yeah. Yeah. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Would you have liked to have seen her win? No, I'm, I like Obama, actually. I think he's cool. Once well, you've had black, you don't go back, <laughs> do you? <laughs> I, I, have I think it should be his new. <laughs> I think it should be his new slogan. No, that'd be the second term. <laughs> the second term. His slogan, his slogan at the moment is um, "Yes, we can," which, if I recall, is also Bob the Builders. <laughs> There was something bizarre which made me laugh um, in the Washington Post. It said something along the lines of Hillary Clinton gives Obama. In the Washington Post? Maybe you could spend a bit of less time. <laughs> I better just you check it out. I'm New York every morning. <laughs> by... I think you might have got the fucking job if you haven't been reading the Washington Post <laughs> and concentrated on the task. On the task, yeah, too busy. Now, I just said something along the lines of uh, Hillary Clinton gives Obama her full throated support. And I thought, well, if she only gave that to Bill, he wouldn't have bugged off with Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Um... Let's see how many people are talking about the US presidential election this week. <laughs> oh, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, third most talked about thing. Yes, this is the story that Barack Obama has defeated Hillary Clinton and won the Democratic presidential nomination. Hillary has been an inspiration. She's shown women around the world that there are limits. <laughs> It was all going so well for Hillary until that kosher chicken task in Morocco. <laughs> Sean, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it the oil strike? Petrol. Is yeah. oil and petrol <laughs> the same <laughs> thing? Yeah. I don't know. Because you put petrol in one place and oil in another in a car. Yeah. They're not the no, same they're thing. Different. Oil. They say we we're running that. out of oil. Petrol but petrol's is... fine, you think? Well, are they the, sa are they the same thing? I don't Sorry, know. So you think there might be... We're running out of oil, but there's loads of petrol left. <laughs> no! <laughs> but they all say <laughs> oil, and they mean petrol. <clears throat> well, calm down. Sorry, if people are watching it... this at what home, don't difference? worry about the fuel crisis, because we've got loads of petrol. No! <laughs> <laughs> is it the same thing? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Just to clear it up, there is a fuel tanker's strike, and oh. all the papers said don't... Panic, which meant everybody's panicked. Can you stockpile petrol? I don't know. Can you stockpile it? Yeah, you can, can, you really can you stockpile it? Can you stockpile it? I don't know. You actually um... fill the whole car up, so you're driving like you're underwater. <laughs> <laughs> everything's going up. Food's going up. Yes. Uh, everything's going up, up. Children's shoes have increased in price, and I really don't know why, because I buy children's shoes all the time. But they're the same price as adult shoes. A brief history of shoes. <laughs> we all know that they start off that big, then they grow to that big, and then they get that big, like, for adult size, and then if you leave them in a cave in Holland, we all know that they grow bigger and bigger and eventually turn out as cars. <laughs>
<laughs> which is why the petrol is so expensive. <laughs> Just to point out, Vic recently had the bends. <laughs> <laughs> in a diving accident. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if petrol is one of the most talked about things of the week. <laughs> yes, it is the most talked about thing this week. <laughs> yes, of course, everyone's talking about petrol prices soaring and the threat of a strike. Panic buying at garages is exacerbating the problem. The government want to reassure people supplies of gingsters and rizzlers are unaffected. <laughs> OK, uh, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about? <laughs> Colleen and Wayne Rooney uh, got married. Yeah. And did you know that they, they searched um, all the guests for mobile phones and cameras when they came in? N nothing to do with the magazine deal, which is the Scouse way of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching in Liverpool, buy a TV licence. <laughs> yeah. I was there last weekend and we're not back for another year. Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> European city of culture. I came, I came back, the car was up on books. <laughs> I've actually never seen Wayne Rooney speak. Can he speak? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Because he's got to do the vows and everything, hasn't he? he yeah, he wrote his own vows. What yeah, did he I'm say? joking. He... <laughs> They did do their own vows. They both said, what's mine is yours and what's yours is, yours mine. is also mine. And I think Clean must have been going... <laughs> yeah. it's, I it's, mean, it's he's a... only going to get a couple of handbags. <laughs> <laughs> the Wait, wedding cost £5 million. Pounds. Yeah. And I was thinking, that was on a Thursday. Imagine how, how much it would have cost on a Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, it'd have been ten at least. <laughs> Every guest has a little box with a butterfly in it and at a crucial moment... Right, they have to open the box and a butterfly mm. flies out. You see, what a great job for an Italian butterfly collector. We want you to collect... I can't do accents. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, do it in the accent. A hundred yeah. butterflies. <laughs> he goes, oh, I love a collector of butterfly. He goes, what's he for? It's a Wayne Rooney's <laughs> wedding. <laughs> you get a hundred butterflies, you put them in a little, little itty teeny box. <laughs> How the hell do you get a butterfly into a box? Just asking it nicely. Yes, go. <laughs> That's why it's cost five million pounds. Yes. <laughs> they got the food at Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see how many people were talking about Wayne and Colleen getting married. <laughs> it's the wedding of the year. Yes, Colleen and Wayne have finally tied the knot. Colleen is the face of Asda. Wayne is the face of bags of spanners. <laughs> On the night of the wedding, there was a £50,000 firework display. Unfortunately, Wayne missed it, as he had to be kept indoors. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's two points for Sean's team and three points for Jason's team. <laughs> Our next round is called Pick of the Polls. Our team's take it in turns to choose a picture from the board and then have to answer a related question. Sean, Vic and Rafe, your turn first. What do you fancy going for? Uh, the a naked couple emerging happily from the tent. This is a word association question. I'm looking for the top word or phrase the public said when we said camping. David Williams. <laughs> <laughs> the you. <laughs> Are you camp? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rain, rain. 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 Right, I'm going to give you that, because it's right. uh, the word most associated with camping is wet. <laughs> <Pretty much it. laughs> yeah. Make sure when you go camping, you have a ground sheet and a hammer, so you can dispose of the person who suggested going camping. <laughs> OK, what picture do you want to go for, Jason Sting? I think we're going to go with... Uh, is it Fern Britton there? She actually got her gastric band on there. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> You've chosen Fern Britain. This is an audience poll question. We polled the studio audience and asked them, if you had a gastric band fitted, would you keep it a secret from your friends? Jodie? <laughs> yeah. Yours has gone brilliantly, Jodie. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were a reet fat lass a few years ago. <laughs> You've really slimmed down. I think I would. From my friends, yeah. Mm. You Maybe. wouldn't tell them, you would tell them. I would. Oh, that, all oh, right, OK. Yeah, trustworthy ones. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't sit there in the pub and blab it out. Yeah. I've got my gastric band in. <laughs> it's like a Jubilee clip, isn't it? 
So it's, it's, it's like putting a Jubilee clip round your stomach. Oh, a Jubilee it's... clip? It's a Jubilee clip, you screw it in... He's like a proper bloke. <laughs> Dawn is like someone's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows that? Old Paul Bartu with the old clip, yeah, <laughs> old Jubilee, yeah. yeah you're right, you've yeah. got any uh, Jubilee, Jubilee clips, clip, yeah. Be... Old Jubilee clip, what are you old knows, mate? Jubilee clip, what are you talking about? <laughs> Everyone knows what a Jubilee clip is. I don't know what a Jubilee clip is. It's a Jubilee clip, is. shut it! I've been <laughs> very... <laughs> well, it's like a Jubilee clip around your stomach, but much more expensive. The same effect if you put a lot of elastic bands around your tongue. <laughs> like, your really, tongue sticks out and it's, like, really tight. You can't <laughs> eat it. She's in a lot of trouble, isn't she? She's not in serious trouble, not with the yeah. police or anything. But why but are they r- upset? Because, and I'll tell you, Sean, because this is something I don't know about petrol and oil, but I know about Firm Britain. <laughs> she'll be on your grave, that. <laughs> <laughs> Not suggesting you should die, but I'm saying. <laughs> Will one as, day. As your I'll think about that. <laughs> Thank you. I love her. Okay. I loved her big and I love her now, okay? The only thing is, because she advertised Rivita and she did sort of things about slimming, but she didn't say she'd had the gastric band. Firm Britain for me is the person I fancy. You know that, that sort of person? Like a sexy you fancy? auntie. <laughs> Like, like that, but without like... the incest connotation. <laughs> so she's your secret. She's yeah, sexy. She's, she's the, I've got I've got two of them: her and Burt Reynolds. And the two, <laughs> the two people I sort of fancy or shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? If you had a gastric band fitted, would you keep it a secret? I think no. No, don't look. Don't look at. No, I'm not looking. I'm looking at Rafe. It's like a beautiful dusky <laughs> version of you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've asked the audience: If you had a gastric band fitted, would you keep it a secret from your friends? Yes, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> no. No, you wouldn't no. keep it a secret. Okay. No. I can tell you the answer is no. Sixty-eight percent said no. <laughs> Fern Britton recently had a gastric band fitted to one of her stomachs. I say gastric band, it was actually the fan belt from a Boeing 747. (laughs) At the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Vic and Rafe have three points. Jason, David and Jody have four points. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they've got to do is tell me whether they think it's true or false. Let's first have a little look at a clip to illustrate the statistic. Well, here we are today, as you might expect, at the world's finest department store. You'll be seeing this look and many others later on in the show. So until then... This is one of my autumn predictions. It's a beautiful garment which has these rather strong satin flowers. And I've teamed this outfit with sequined gloves and sequined tights. (laughs) Hello. Karen. You look brilliant. (laughs) Join the club. And I'm wearing a cropped number this time with a fabric face you might have noticed. Why don't you go and put something else on to to wow the customers? (laughs) What a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) What a gorgeously satisfying day this has been. And so many bargains. That was David Williams. No. <laughs> that was, in fact, performance artist Lee Bowery on The Close Show in 1988. Fashion hasn't caught up with Lee Bowery, but when it does, it's going to kick the shit out of him. <laughs> Here's your related statistic. 62% of men would rather go shopping than play sport. True or false? We've been shopping together, haven't we? We love it. We've also wrestled together. So we, we like to I wasn't really clear two. what the rules were there, because it the ended really abruptly, and then uh, you never called me. <laughs> Is trouser theft considered a sport? No. No. Well, count me in just for 100% shopping. <laughs> I don't mind food shopping. Big fan of that. Big well, fan we can of... see, yes. Exactly, you know. <laughs> I'm a big fan, fan David! Of that. Whoa! Can <laughs> I say something to you? Is that you do have a stray nostril hair. Yeah. And it's like, do you want me to get it for I you? I haven't get it, get it. That. Did you get a little bogey oh. with it? There, you see that? That's a oh. bad boy. That's oh. <laughs> No, because you don't want to be... <laughs> 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 So what are you going to go for? You're yes. saying true? Yes. Well, hang on. Whose question was it? It's Everybody. both. Yes. Well, well, we're everybody. saying yes as well. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> we're saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're saying yes. You saying yes? We're all saying yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can we're tell you the yes. answer is true. 62% of men would rather go shopping than play sports. Yeah. That's right. I'd have to say I agree. If you ever hear me saying cities playing, I mean Sex in the City's on at the film house. We're meeting at 12 for cocktails. Be there or be square. It's going to be fabulous. <laughs> so at the end of that round, I can tell you it's four points to Sean's team and five points for Jason's team. <laughs> and 
the winner is is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. Top reason Brits are teased at work. Is it because they say I can work with Prince or Pauper on TV? <laughs> <laughs> that must be right up there because that would be pretty annoying. <laughs> What do you mean by that? It was basically a dickish way of saying I get on with chalk and if cheese. It's, if you're going to chalk and cheese, it's a dickish way of saying you get on with Prince and Pauper. <laughs> is it because um, they're still quite new, northern, and might have put on a little bit of weight since the last series? <laughs> you're lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Where does teasing stop and bullying take over? Uh, when you use a blade. <laughs> <laughs> If you someone had a big nose and you just called them Concord, that would be teasing. But if you, if you used it to open a yoghurt pot like that, <laughs> that would be bullying, wouldn't it? <laughs> Top reason Brits are teased at work. Is it because when you weren't looking, the salesman had dipped his cock in your tea? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a clue. It's something that um, the winner of The Apprentice suffers from. Uh, not being able to pronounce words? Yeah, that's exactly right. Speech happen. impediment. Yeah, that'll oh. do. Good work. <laughs> Yes, the top five reasons for being bullied at work are speech impediment, accent, dress sense, baldness and ginger hair. If you're watching this, Anthony Worrell-Thompson, <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> Least desirable car passenger. Is it the Pope? Because whatever the weather, you've got to keep the sunroof open because of his hat. <laughs> in like a perspex box as well so yeah. did you watch Cardi last night oh, forget it forget <laughs> it <laughs> right who would you hate to be stuck in a car with um a rapist um... <laughs> <laughs> i just imagine you going oh stuck in here with a rapist <laughs> i can get on with prince pauper or rapist <laughs> yeah. i reckon stephen hawking would be bad because you wouldn't know it was him talking or the sat nav <laughs> To do with it's someone that's uh, annoyed a lot of people that drive cars. A bear, Alice Darling. Correct. Oh, wow. Yeah, the least desirable car passenger is the Chancellor, Alistair Darling. Heather Mills came second. She's a terrible backseat driver, always telling you to put her foot down. <laughs> <laughs> that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Vic, and Rafe have five points. Jason, David, and Jody are the winners. They've got seven points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. See you next week. Their team captain, Jason Manford. And facing them tonight, from Dragon's Den, Theo Pafitis. From across the pond, Mike Wilmot. And their team captain, Sean Lott. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy And welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 44% of Brits keep their socks on during sex? Fair enough, why would you take your socks off in a car park? <laughs> the average person will spend two weeks of their life waiting for the traffic lights to change. I think they might be broken? <laughs> and 20% of adults in Britain don't know how to use email, and they work on the help desk at PC World. <laughs> right, let's get on with the show. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason, Kelly, John, your team to go first. What have the nation been talking about? Uh, we reckon 
Big Brother and uh, more specifically uh, Alexandra. Alexandra. She, uh, she's been threatening the rest of the Big Brother inmates, is I that the word? I think it's really inmates. funny. Can we just clarify, because Alex might be watching this, she's, she's out of the house now. I don't respect you. <laughs> Did you see what she said? She said, I've got cancer friends, they can do what I say, pow, pow. Like, how old is she? Eight. They're going to get you, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with girls, is at school, they never learn a good gun noise, you see. No. <laughs> but, it, like, if that had been a bloke, he'd have give it the old... <laughs> do you know what I mean? I believe the phrase is, blap, blap, blap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, no-one fuck with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll never be ready. <laughs> you remember I told you. <laughs> What's that? That's, that a, like... that's how I roll, motherfucker. It's <laughs> not how I roll, I roll yeah. like that. <laughs> With the bitches in the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you were in a gang, you'd be the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's winding me up, though, is E4's coverage of the, of the live streaming. Yeah. And they let you watch them sleep, they let, them, let you watch them eat, but any time anything interesting happens, they cut to a break. They start doing the... <laughs> little bird noises and all that stuff, right? And it's quite annoying. There's been a few times where they're like, oh, yeah, now guess what? Guess who I've had sex with? Well, I'll tell you... On <laughs> 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 <The> Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Big Brother is one of the most talked about things this week. Yay. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> yes, in Big Brother news this week, Alex has been removed from the house. Alex spent the last 24 hours in a hotel room. You have to clean it quicker than that, love, or you'll get the sack. <laughs> Sean Mike Theopathetis off of Dragon's Den. Yeah. What have the nation been talking about? It's, is it the uh, visit this week of uh, George Bush? To London, visited London, Gordon Brown, very pleased to see him. <laughs> yeah, thrilled. Yeah. We? Well, I imagine he is. It makes him look better, doesn't it? Same principle like Simon Cowell got Piers Morgan on Britain's Got Talent. Says, if you think I'm a smug, self-satisfied bastard, <laughs> look at this bloke. I think... <laughs> is that warm here? I, I think it's just funny that, you know, when uh, I'm Canadian and when our Prime Minister visits, not a lot of hoopla. Like, like when our Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, and right there, I could have said any name at all. <laughs> I, could have, I could have said Zorak the Invincible, <laughs> and there'd still be people watching at home yeah, going, yeah. yeah, I hear he's invincible. Yeah. Yes, Zorak. <laughs> George Bush, we got to Windsor Castle, and I thought, that would be an episode of Cribs. I wouldn't mind watching. <laughs> Just Prince Philip walking around, going to the bedroom, and this is where the magic happens. <laughs> Do you think he was secretly a little bit disappointed that Windsor Castle wasn't bouncy? <laughs> <laughs> you saying he's stupid? That's what I was saying. That's one of his greatest skills, isn't it? It's, it's, it's this idea that he's convinced everyone he's stupid, and he's not stupid. He's just really anti-clever, isn't he? So he, <laughs> he doesn't like clever things. Like reading books the right way up. I'm going to go through a couple of things he has said over the years. Yeah. When asked to describe the White House, he said, it is white. <laughs> Technically correct. It's not wrong. OK. He said, more and more of our imports come from abroad. Correct. <laughs> yeah. OK. I think we can agree the past is over. It's all right. Just, that is it's fact all right. after fact. Right. <laughs> Here we go. He's a fact machine. Yeah. Last one. When asked by a reporter why Osama bin Laden had not been caught, he said, he's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> He ruined my whole entire week this week. I he ruined your week? Yes. Oh, well, the Iraq oh, no. war was one thing. What has he done now? <laughs> For fuck's sake, Kelly. And I was fine with Afghanistan. This go, is too much. I had to leave, like, two and a half hours early so that I could get there because there was so much traffic. Jesus. It's what This guy's got to be stopped. What are we doing? <laughs> right, let's see if President Bush is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, indeed he is. Yes, this week, President Bush made his last official visit to Britain. After leaving office, Bush intends to devote a couple of years to finishing his book. He can't believe that caterpillar is still hungry. <laughs> uh, Jason, Kelly and John, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, we reckon Paul Burrell, 
has been in the paper quite a lot. Uh, someone said that he shagged Princess Diana. And I can't believe a, a, a beautiful princess who's married to the future King of England. She, was, uh, she had affairs with a major in the army. She had an affair with the captain of the England rugby team. And she's thinking, yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll shag my fat gay butler. That's what I'm <laughs> That's <laughs> Paul said that he, he, he saw the Queen naked yes, in her bedroom. Oh. How did he manage that? He was chasing a corgi that ran into the Queen's bedroom. Apparently the Queen was stood there naked. It's sort of freaky. Imagine busting in and seeing, like, four corgis and a naked Queen. That sounds like the, the best hand he can have in a poker game. <laughs> <laughs> four corgis and a naked Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Etiquette for, for seeing the Queen naked. What do you do? Do you bow? Do you salute? I've seen her naked. Yeah? On Photoshop. <laughs> amazing, she looks. <laughs> She's got an amazing tattoo. It's a full fox hunt coming over her shoulders. <laughs> Load of dogs across her tummy and a little fox <laughs> nipping in for cover. I can tell you it's not one of the top five most talked about things this week. OK, Sean, over to you. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The, the uh, impending uh, uh, interest rate rises, general economic gloom and doom, rising prices of food. Food's gone way up. Anyone who has their five a day now is just showing off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly, there's one food that hasn't gone up, tripe. It's still a very reasonable <laughs> eight pence a tonne. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're a businessman, right? Yeah. You may understand yeah. this kind of thing. Explain to me what's going on. Well, basically, the Chancellor got a letter from the Governor of the Bank of England to tell him we're fucked, officially. <laughs> it took a letter from the Governor of the Bank of England. You know the worst thing about the letter? It cost cool. the Chancellor 25 quid. <laughs> you know, Ryman's and Lacenza, isn't it? The under the lingerie. Um, Ron Lacenza, yes. I've had an idea for you. Crotchless post-it notes. <laughs> and, you see and... there's a demand, do you? Yeah, huge. I'm a big fan of the old sexy underwear situation. I've, um, we don't I've, do your size. This, <laughs> 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 and there's loads of money saving tips people are putting out that, you know, you, there's loads of different ways you can save money. And I was thinking of cut one like breakfast. Is that, you know, I know it's wrong, but steal birds' eggs for your breakfast. <laughs> They're littler, but they are actually quite tasty. <laughs> and I've started taking hormones. In a few months, I'll be lactating, so that's milk in the morning. <laughs> Saving, little saving. And what I do is make a great big pot of stew, really big pot of stew. Pigeons. Yeah. But have you, pigeons? Have you... What? Pigeons. Well, what do you say, pigeons? You can't just say pigeons. <laughs> You've got to have yeah. something before it and after it, Theo. You can't just go, pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good idea? Trafalgar <laughs> Square. Trafalgar Square, yeah. yeah. Get the pigeon. Get the pigeon. Eat the pigeons. In the They've street. all gone. Who got rid of the pigeons? Have Who's you got... gone mental? They've literally gone mental. <laughs> This is serious. I know you've got money. Have you been drinking all day? <laughs> I'm on a lingerie shop. Pigeons. <laughs> right, let's see whether the state of the economy is one of the top five most talked about things. I have a feeling it will be. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, 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 the most talked about thing this week. Yes, this is the continuing story of economic crisis. The credit crunch is causing pensioners to be hit hardest. Well, let go of the handbag then, Nana. <laughs> If you're watching, don't have nightmares. <laughs> Snatch a bag. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Jason. Uh, Euros, the Euro 2008, the football that we've not been invited to. Why? Well, because we were rubbish. Steve McLaren fucked it up. But we, um, <laughs> Well, half the team couldn't have gone because of Wayne Rooney's wedding. <laughs> it's hard not being there because you've had to find, like, another team to support with, like, a weird angle, like, oh, I drive a Fiat, so I support Italy, or I've got a necklace out of onions, so I support France. So, I'm, I'm mine... <laughs> <laughs> mine's been... I quite like Nando's, so I'll support Portugal. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, quite like. Yeah, quite probably. like it. But then the problem is... They've got Ronaldo, who I ate, and I've had to come to a conclusion. Do I like Perry Perry Chicken more than I ate Cristiano Ronaldo? It's a tough question. <laughs> Try and ask it yourself. <laughs> but as well, like, like, they're trying to get an atmosphere. At what point does a grown adult want a flag painted on the face? When did that start happening? <laughs> I remember the, in, the world, in the World Cup, there was a woman working in Tesco, and they'd obviously let her let them wear their, the, the England shirts. And she was not just in an England shirt, she had shorts on, socks, 
and shin pads, right? <laughs> she was stacking shelves, right? And then... <laughs> so I slide tackled her, right? <laughs> Brilliant! Shocked. She was shocked. <laughs> Let's see if Euro 2008 is up there. Number two, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> OK, there's uh, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? <laughs> the release of uh, Bin Laden's number two in Europe. His right-hand man, apparently. He's the way I remember man. his name is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> which, which is terrible, because it makes me say his name in a very jolly way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's been released, uh, much to the annoyance of the government and various uh, tabloids. He's got very stringent uh, uh, restrictions on his movement. He's only allowed out for an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. He'd have to watch a film in, like, three visits. If he wants to go and see <laughs> Sex in the City, which I imagine he can't wait to see, <laughs> he's out of prison. he'd have to go in, watch 45 minutes, go back home. Ooh, I wonder what's going to happen next. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> wait till two o'clock. <laughs> Don't tell me the story to everybody. Did you see that restriction? One of the great restrictions he's got is he can't have Bin Laden to visit him. <laughs> to be fair, he's a bad influence on him. So, you know. Okay, you're right, yeah. <laughs> We don't know if he's actually made it home because he's being delivered from prison by MI5 agents. There's a very good chance they'll leave him on the train. Let's see if Abu Qatada is out there. Yes, this is the news that controversial cleric Abu Qatada has been released from prison. Qatada denied he influenced shoe bomber Richard Reed with his controversial sermon entitled Bomb Them With Your Shoes, Richard. <laughs> Abu Qatada denies being responsible for 9 11, 7 7, 21 7, or the bonus ball. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you Sean Steam have three points, Jason Steam have two points. Our next round is called Pick of the Polls. Our teams take it in turns to choose a picture from the board and then they have to answer a related question. OK, Sean, you to go first. What picture do you fancy? What's, what's that fella? That's Raj Pursu. We'll have him then. Dr Raj Pursu has been in the news this week accused of plagiarism. So we polled our studio audience and we asked them, is it OK to cheat if it makes you successful? What he, what he said was, he said, I didn't really have to cheat or steal it. He said there was a few copying and pasting errors. Which is a bit like if you've been done for stealing a car, you say, there's been a few driving and parking errors. Really. <laughs> it's also like, like they're saying it's plagiarism. Maybe it was just like a band's do it, like a cover version. He was just saying, look, I, I, I think this professor's really great, so I'm just using all of his words. He <laughs> changed two words in the book. In fact, he just changed the name of the author. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we polled our audience and asked, is it OK to cheat if it makes you successful? What are you going to go for, Sean? Sure. I okay. think if they're honest. Yes, no. yeah, they probably said yes, didn't they? So you're going to go yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, I can tell you the answer is yes. 55% said it's OK to cheat if it makes you successful. <laughs> yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause, you cheating bastards. <laughs> Raj Perso has been in the news this week as he's been investigated for plagiarism. Professor Richard Bentall said he was flabbergasted at the blatancy of his colleagues cheating. In response, Dr Perso said he was flabbergasted at the blatancy of his colleagues cheating. <laughs> Jason's team, what picture do you fancy? Ooh. I think, uh, Amy Winehouse. This is a poll with a whole question. 12% of people think Amy Winehouse has what? Some sort of drug problem. I was just waiting. <laughs> 12% of 12%. people. <laughs> what about 12% of people think that she's not on drugs? The only person that thinks she's not on drugs is Pete Doherty, who thinks, yeah, she dabbles a bit, but not really. 12% <laughs> of people think Amy Winehouse has what? Some of the worst tattoos I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> They're dreadful, her tattoos, aren't they? I think the only people who should have tattoos are people in the Navy. I saw a guy once who did his own tattoos, and he was a Motorhead fan, and he wanted to write Ace of Spades under his eye, <laughs> but he didn't space I it out, and he had like Ace of Spad. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the best tattoo I've ever seen was an, uh, an older woman that I had a thing with years ago, and she had a complete fox hunt um, <laughs> over her shoulder <laughs> and down there, and the fox disappeared. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> 12% think she's got pigeons in oh, there. Oh, you're, you're very, very close with that, Theo Pafidis. Nits. Nits. I'll give Nits. you that, yeah. 12% of people think Amy Winehouse has head lice. <laughs> We're not going to go on about Amy's drug addiction, but it's the dragon I feel sorry for. Imagine being chased by that. <laughs> <laughs> Have I told you about my new book? What's your book called? Enter the Dragon. <gasps> oh, like Theo Something Pafidis. on the Swingers website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you see in there go like this, enter me. Only in prison. <laughs> It's a good thing Deborah Meaden didn't get there first. Yeah. <laughs> Count your blessings. You're selling paper clips and knickers. Do you design the knickers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why no one's ever done an all in one for men. You know, like women have that thing and they just have some poppers there. They're the most uncomfortable thing in the whole entire world and one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me in my life was that my stylist made me wear one. Go on. I put it on and then I was like, Dad, look at this. This is the most stupid thing ever, not realising that it has a gusset hole. You showed your dad your la-la. <laughs> that is an embarrassing thing. It could have been worse. It could have been Jack wearing it with his bollocks hanging out, just like... <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just second-hand? <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe it was a shithole and you had it on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wilmot there adding a touch of class to proceedings. <laughs> so at the end of that round, I can tell you it's five points for Sean's team and two points for Jason's team. <laughs> the next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Let's have a look at a clip from Tomorrow's World to illustrate your statistic. Good King Wenslow's last look down. For goodness sake, please be quiet. Go away. We're trying to get some sleep round here. Well, you can't win them all. I don't know what happened to his Christmas spirit and good cheer, but maybe I need someone to help me singing. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas. Oh, that's Christmas. I need him and happy him. Tear up him and tear up him. Fantastic. Sing some more. I'll take care of that, thank you. All you need to make a bit of money at this game is a computer, a voice synthesizer, a radio controlled robot like Fred here, and you're in business. Your related uh, question, 66% of people would rather have a robot than a pet. True or false? I mean, I've got two cats. I've got two Ew. cats I don't like. I don't like them. I prefer dogs. But what I like about dogs is every so often, it just winks at you. Just, you know, just gives you a little <laughs> wink. That's because they're content with life. It's sort of, they wink at you to go, it's all right, isn't it, life? And cats occasionally wink at you as well. They sort of go, if you don't give me food, I will chew your face off. So that's... <laughs> Your mum's got loads of dogs, hasn't she? Yes, yeah, she does. She's got about 20. And my dad, she had this room built. It just has a chair, a TV that's on the Animal Channel, and then chairs for my dad to go in there and hang out with the dogs. Literally, you've got a dog house for your dad. <laughs> he says dogs don't talk back. I have daughters. I can understand that completely. I sit on the shitter for days. <laughs> The downside of having a robot is, of course, you're always dissatisfied with it because you always know there's a slightly improved model out there with a better voice. It's so like that's a always going to make you. Because <laughs> we're constantly going, oh, I want the one that goes, doesn't go, yes, now I love you. That sounds like me. <laughs> Come here, honey, give me a kiss. 66% <laughs> of people would rather have a robot than a pet, so you're saying true or false? We're saying false. You're saying false? Yeah. You're saying true. true. Okay, I can tell you the answer is false. Well done, you. <laughs> Only 26% of people would rather have a robot than a pet. Just like robots, pets have got an off switch, but you can only find it with the edge of a spade. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you it's five points for Sean's team and three points to Jason's team. <laughs> it's all to play for as we go into the final round, which is, and the winner is, the most common lie told in the workplace. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I'm really glad you brought your baby in. <laughs> that was yeah. great, that we really enjoyed seeing it. <laughs> is it your call is important to us? <laughs> is it someone has been downloading pornography <laughs> on my computer? <laughs> has anyone ever lied to you? I mean, you run a couple of massive businesses. Well, not if they want to stay alive afterwards, no. Well, listen oh. to the You're a murderer. <laughs> Just, just for your information, John, Theopophetus <laughs> is in Alex's gang. Yeah. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's not my fault. I, it's uh, dangerous, so dangerously close, I think I will give you that. Really? The most common lie in the workplace is, I don't know what happened. 
happens. <laughs> Top thing to rescue if your house is on fire. My mum always had this fear that our house was going to burn down. It's because you've got Ozzy Osbourne wandering around it. <laughs> so I still have this ladder, so if there was ever a fire, I could jump out my window and climb down. You would think that with the money your parents have got, they'd put slides instead of ladders. That'd be a lot more yeah, fun, wouldn't it, for kids? Woo! There's a fire again! Fire! Brilliant! <laughs> First thing I'd save, the recycling. Because <laughs> I spent so long sorting out bottles. <laughs> and I'm not going to waste that two hours. I'm not going to waste that. That's coming with me. You haven't got that long. I know. All right, there's no need to shout, Theo. <laughs> it's a fire. Don't worry. Kelly, what would you rescue? Probably my pictures. I'd rescue my photographs, because if the police ever get hold of them, I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite a practical thing. Oh, oh spatula. <laughs> Keys. Keys is exactly Keys. right. Keys, yes. Kelly, I'll... I'll give you that, but it is, in fact, car keys. I'll take that, I'll take that. Yeah. Got the car keys, love? Love? <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Theo and Mike have five points, Jason, Kelly and John have five points. Everyone's a winner on 8 out of 10 cats. <laughs> to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. John Locke, and facing them tonight, Hollyoaks boy, Matt Butler, Glaswegian Joy, Frankie Boyle, and their team captain, Jason Manford. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, one in four people think that using an electric toothbrush is lazy? Yeah, what's wrong with traditional foreplay? 62% <laughs> of Scots spend more than 30 minutes on the phone every day. Hello, it's me again. I'm having another heart attack. <laughs> And a plastic bag in a landfill site takes a thousand years to rot away. So, in a sense, it is a bag for life. <laughs> Take that, MS. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organization and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panel's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason, Matt, Frankie, what are the nation be talking about this week? Wimbledon. Well, they're all there. Hewitt uh, is there, Federer, uh, Murray, the Williams brothers are there. So they're all... <laughs> <laughs> they're all pretty, it's pretty good. Tim Edmund is doing uh, the commentary for the, uh, for the old Beeb and uh, it's going to be weird for him staying the full two weeks, I think. <laughs> Do you think halfway through the commentary he's not doing so well, someone just goes, Come on, Tim! <laughs> uh, Do you watch the Wimbledon? Yeah, I watched uh, Andy Murray beat the French guy. I'm quite surprised he beat him and the French guy didn't just surrender after a couple of sets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's a new word, isn't it? Because it's hen mania, and now they've got andemonium. And I said, really? <laughs> it's good, andemonium. I said, really, it should be called Andy Pandemonium, shouldn't it? He's a very miserable looking bastard, Murray, as well, isn't he? Yeah, as opposed to your good self, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty one year old millionaire who looks like if they let him near the umpire's chair, he'd hang himself <laughs> off it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so boring, tennis, that the slightest thing. The crowd go mental, like it's the most hilarious, yeah. shocking thing they've ever seen. R Federer's opponent sat next to him. Did you see that bit? The crowd reacted like he picked up a ball boy, swung him around by the ankles, and thrown him into the crowd. <laughs> Why did they throw the sweaty. It's horrible. They throw their sweaty headbands into the. 
This whole week, we're in here for about three hours, sweaty like. Imagine if, imagine if Vanessa at the end just got her knickers off and went, go on! <laughs> They're press obsessed with knickers, aren't yeah. they? If you just were going, go on, I can see her knickers, go oh, I can see her looking <laughs> knickers, you'd be down as a pervert, you'd get arrested. <laughs> the sun can just go to the, the tennis and go, whoa, look at her knickers, oh, she's got red ones on, whoa. It's the equivalent of standing at the bottom of the stairs at work, just going, oh, I've seen your knickers. <laughs> For some reason, it's fine. But don't you think that those sound effects, you know when they go, ugh, every time they serve and everything, ugh, and if you combine that with porn, where everyone's always going, oh, ugh, don't you think it just puts ordinary people under colossal pressure? Because, like, very often you're being shagged and you don't want to make any noise, you just want to go... Oh. <laughs> you don't always have to go, oh, do you? Or you go, oh. You just always want to go... <laughs> and you don't really have to. Why don't you just get them to shag you and put the tennis on in the background? <laughs> Uh, well, let's see how many people are talking about Wimbledon this week. It's the most talked about thing in Great Britain this week. Yes, Wimbledon started this week. Tim Henman is commentating this year, which means the chances of him winning the competition are exactly the same as last year. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Vanessa and Lee, what else have the nation been talking about this week? There's Nelson Mandela's birthday concerts in Hyde Park, and uh, there's Glastonbury as well. And everyone's worried about Amy Winehouse. Well, will she be well enough to make it? Her dad, Mitch, says she's got emphysemia, which em I think, at 24, that must be some kind of record. But by the time she's 30, she'll have scurvy and rickets. <laughs> she'll go in a bath chair with an ear trumpet. <laughs> have you seen the pictures of her this week? She looks like a campaign poster for neglected horses. Yeah. <laughs> The thing they used to do at Glastonbury is they always had a bit ironic, so they'd have someone like Tom Jones on or Shirley Bassey. But it's gone way too ironic this year. And this year they've got Will Young on, Neil Diamond and Shaking Stevens. It's like a wedding disco. You <laughs> <laughs> say, oh, Shaking Stevens, he'll be brilliant. He won't. He'll be shit, cos he's shit. <laughs> Would you be tempted to go to Glastonbury? Um, yeah, I'm going to Glastonbury. You get killed tonight, don't you? Yeah, two hours dead. Oh, good. <laughs> You should go oh, to all the stone people at Glastonbury and uh, <laughs> make yourself white. Make yourself all white and then just unzip the tent like that and go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Hollyoaks is on a big screen at Glastonbury? It's a bit more mental than, than putting Jay Z on, is it? Jay Z. Is it Jay Z now? Yeah, he's in England. It's oh, Jay right. Z now. <laughs> You're over here, you play virus. It's Jay Z. <laughs> I did a Reading Festival and uh, it, all the tents are really close. You can hear the bands, they're, they're not that far away. There was a band on stage when I was on, right, and there was like a sort of thrash metal punk band. And their finale was the lead singer has a shit onto a towel. Oh, no. Then gets the towel and swings it round. <laughs> and then throws it into the crowd. What, he's, oh. he's nicked your act? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be great if Nelson did that, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a party! I'm 90! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's see if the big concert weekend is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it's the Glastonbury weekend. Kelly Osborne is going to be filming a video diary of the shenanigans backstage. I didn't even realise the shenanigans were playing. A concert to celebrate Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday is also happening. Scheduled to perform is Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse has lung damage, but was told it will improve if she gives up drink and drugs. I won't hold my breath. And she can't. <laughs> they originally thought Amy had TB, which she caught from the badger that lives in her head. <laughs> Jason, Matt, Frankie, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it Big Brother? I thought the blind guy would have been more entertaining. I wanted to see him take a shit in the diary room and spend <laughs> <laughs> two hours looking for the flush. Um, well, I can tell you Big Brother is not one of the most talked about things this week, but it was the fourth week of Big Brother. Jennifer has warned Big Brother that she's anti-fox hunting and anti-abortion. Well, that's ruined that task. <laughs> OK, Sean, what else has Britain been talking about this week? Uh, 
Valerie Singleton. Yes, Valerie Singleton was at pains to make it clear that anyone who said she'd ever had a lesbian affair was lying because she hadn't. So this is a fairly dormant rumour which has now been raked up by Valerie Singleton, so now everyone's saying... But is she it's not a rumour. It's not a rumour. It's one of the cornerstones of all knowledge. <laughs> Valerie Singleton, you go, she's a lesbian. It's a fact. You know, and her saying she's not a lesbian has kind of pretty much rocked my world. <laughs> Vanessa, let me ask you, as a woman, it's not a terrible thing to be called a lesbian, is it? I mean, it's not, you know, defamation no. of character. It's no, not a no, terrible no, thing it's not to a be. terrible thing. And then no. Chovy well, being... Well, it depends how you do it. You go, you're a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> You go, you're a lesbian. You know, that's not nice, is it? It's the way you say it. Yeah. Lesbian! <laughs> that's nice. Come in! Yeah. <laughs> lesbian! Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, number one. That's not very nice. In the story, it said that she had sex with Peter Purvis while they were. Uh, <laughs> which is a great name. Someone who's having sex. Purvis. <laughs> she said that she got it on with Albert Finney. But she said that they never had sex. They thra This is the quote. Thrashed about a bit on the bed. What does that mean exactly? I'm I'll show you. This, come on. <laughs> yes. That was my penis screaming. <laughs> I can tell you that Valerie Singleton is not one of the most talked about things this week, but it was in the news. Valerie Singleton denied any lesbian allegations and was so shocked by the rumours that she dropped her pool cue and spilt bitter down the front of her dungarees. <laughs> what else have the nation be talking about? Soldiers spotting the UFOs in Shropshire. Ooh. Yeah. Tell me more. I don't know what they're doing in Shropshire. Like, there's a weird sort of Yoda-esque sort of bloke going, uh, alien going, Ooh, mm, we must see Shrewsbury Town Hall, we must. <laughs> Yeah, he's one of them described it as a cylindrical object with things protruding out the side, so that's just a plane. <laughs> My problem with unidentified flying objects is if they identify it, then it's just a flying object. And if at any point it lands, it's just an object. <laughs> and then you've just seen an O. <laughs> Let's see if soldiers spotting UFOs is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it is. Speaking in at number five. This is the story that soldiers spotted UFOs in Market Drayton. The incident is set to be made into a movie entitled The Goose That Flew Over Market Drayton. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, what else have people been talking about? Is it the... Uh, well, it's been Gordon Brown, uh, it's his first year in charge, and uh, they brought out an, an equality bill this week, haven't they? Yeah. Labour. And this caused consternation in papers like the Daily Mail and the, uh, and the Express. They're saying that women will be more equal than men. Yeah. But the easiest way to explain this to Vanessa is, if yes. I got paid a hundred money, yes. then if you did the same job, you would be paid a hundred money as yes. well. <laughs> Sounds good to me, mate. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Are you thinking about shopping and cake? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> age. Uh, they say there's no more age discrimination at work. So you've got, they've got to start employing older people at work. You would hope that there was some sort of cut. Like, I don't yeah. want to be watching Babe Station with a 90-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speak for yourself, son. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing I want to see gotten rid of with uh, discrimination with this old people and young people and all that is the preferential treatment that old people get on a bus. <laughs> it winds me up, they pay less and they get the best seats. <laughs> it's not the best seat, it stinks of piss. <laughs> I don't trust Brian, mate. It looks terrible, Brown. It looks like a sad face that somebody's drawn onto their scrotum. <laughs> George Bush actually knows who Gordon Brown is. He probably thinks Tony Blair's put on weight and had a fucking stroke. <laughs> Such a bad man. Well, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, this is the story of the new Equality Bill. It aims to improve the lives of ethnic minorities, women and the elderly. It's been codenamed Project Rusty Lee. <laughs> Also this week, Gordon Brown has pledged to give the poorest families £200 to help them climb the social ladder. For some, £200 is the difference between living in poverty and living in poverty with a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have they... Is it the football, the European Championships? The football? Yeah. Mm, tell me more. It's been weird, the Euros, because it's been weird not being there, isn't it? It's sort of like in the summer when all the other kids are playing outside and you're not allowed out, you've had to go to bed early. You're looking out, you're like, Mum, but Romania's there. You're like, well, I'm not Romania's mum, am I? <laughs> Have you been watching them? I've seen a few of it. My mate's really into the Italian football, so he's always watching it. So I'm upstairs angry 
and I can just hear him downstairs cheering. Whee! So, a bit annoying. I didn't even realise you were gay. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the, the Germany-Turkey game? Yeah, yeah. TV just crashed for about 40 minutes. They just froze the screen and said, sorry, no pictures. There's a thunderstorm in Austria. <laughs> so we had to listen to the radio commentary through the telly. Well worth the two grand for that eye deaf telly. <laughs> so this morning I thought I'll watch it again. So I, I, it's on iPlayer. And the BBC have kept the 40 minutes or whatever you can't see <laughs> on iPlayer. <laughs> so basically what they're saying is if you missed it the first time, you can miss it again on iPlayer. <laughs> Making the unmissable, missable. <laughs> Should we have a look and see if the football's one of the most talked about things this week? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, the European Cup final is on Sunday. England not qualifying means we can now watch games neutrally. Games like Spain versus the Nazis. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Sean, Lee and Vanessa have two points. Jason, Matt and Frankie have three points. <laughs> Our next round is called Pick of the Polls. Sean, what do you fancy answering a question on? Um, Naomi Campbell. Lovely Naomi Campbell. OK. This is an audience poll question. Naomi Campbell escaped jail this week after she was accused of another assault. So we polled the studio audience and asked them, would you work for Naomi Campbell? She's got 200 hours community service because she went mental on a plane, didn't she? She has, and it's not the first time she's had run-ins with the law. Yeah, she's done community service before, didn't she, in New York? Yeah. Because she hit her assistant with a blackberry. And when you first read it, <laughs> you go, that's not that bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a pumpkin, I can understand. <laughs> She just got a pumpkin and put it on the head like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look a bit like you, actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> For our Halloween special on this show, I just light a candle in my mouth. <laughs> you just blow it, his eyes go out. <laughs> but she um, went mental on a plane, didn't she? She, she went absolutely went, ballistic. Well, it was Terminal 5, I believe, had lost yeah. her back. The first thing she said was, she, it's because I'm black and famous. And I think you'll find that BA are an equal opportunities bag loser. <laughs> <laughs> don't lose anyone's bag. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't care whether you're prince or pauper. <laughs> what do you think of her, Vanessa? Do you like her? She's not an endearing person. If I were to work for her, I know the role I'd like to fulfil, actually. I wouldn't mind being her Brazilian waxer and pouring molten wax all over her pudenda. I think that would be a nice <laughs> job. Well, same here, but for very different reasons. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever had a hissy fit, like a proper showbiz hissy fit? Did no, I'm you... a very calm and relaxed person, Jimmy, you know that. I take everything in my stride. Yeah. Don't fucking interrupt. <laughs> Kate Moss, she never does anything like this. You see a picture of her pretty much every day, but you never hear her voice, do you? The reason Kate Moss doesn't speak is she's very beautiful, but actually she talks like this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kate Moss. I'm very excited about my new top shop raise. <laughs> <laughs> I've designed all the shows myself! <laughs> Sexy. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what, what are you saying, Sean? Would our studio audience want to work for Naomi Campbell or not? No, absolutely Definitely not. not. Okay, I can tell you, you are right. <laughs> yes, 75% of our studio audience said they would not work for Naomi Campbell. Naomi remains an important role model for every young aspiring total fucking bitch. <laughs> Jason, what do you fancy answering a question on? Uh, what's it called? It's got speed cameras, I think. According to statistics, what's the worst invention? Speed cameras or religion? I think it's got to be speed cameras. It's worse, isn't it? Because speed cameras have made people fly planes into large buildings. That's never happened with religion, has it? Oh, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> yeah. the worst. <laughs> near me, there's, um, there's a school. You can only go 20 mile an hour all the time. But I think what they should do is say it's 20 mile an hour between 8 o'clock and half past 9, and then between 3 o'clock and about five o'clock. And that way, that will stop kids wagging school. You know, for the rest of the time, you're allowed to do 100, right? <laughs> Get in school, you little shit, right? You know, I mean, that <laughs> The 20 mile an hour speed limit around a school encourages lechery, doesn't it? Nice and slow. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit me at 30, there's an 80% chance I'll live. And if you drive past me at 20, there's an 80% chance you'll go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what are you going to go with? You're dead, so you know there's another side. Is, it, did you, is there a... <laughs> is there a Holly 07? No. No? It's where do... the bill. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what, what are you going to go with? Must be religion, must be. Religion? Religion? We're going to go religion. I can tell you, speed cameras are worse than religion. 15% oh. of people thought speed cameras <laughs> were the worst thing ever invented. Only 3% of people thought religion was the worst thing ever. <laughs>
The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate their statistic. People think that reception jobs are boring, but it's what you make the job. Good afternoon, Rich. Hello, Rule Hello, Rule Bellamy. Hello, Rule Bellamy. Hello, Rule Bellamy. Hello, Rule Bellamy. The way I get rid of pent-up pressure is by laughing. Oh. <laughs> and joking with people, because you certainly don't want to cry. Can you the car park, please? No. You want to look professional yeah, on reception. <laughs> I used to do a chicken over the tannoy. I was banned oh, from God. doing it. Everyone thinks I'm mad here anyway. Charlotte, please. Oh, you want to speak to Charlotte? Well, I don't know whether I want to put you through. <laughs> oh, I'm being nasty. I'll be through. All done. <laughs> Would the owner of the Blue Escort... The worst job. Oh, well, uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't like to be um, the Prime Minister. I wouldn't want to be the Prime Minister. Well, love, you are in luck. <laughs> if I went into somewhere and I went, oh, can I get the key for that? And they went, yeah, oh, mm, oh, I just go, boom. <laughs> the, uh, the related statistic from that, 22% of receptionists admit they've taken revenge by tampering with their boss's coffee. Is that true or false? Where does tampering... You know, what's the difference between tampering and poisoning? Like, did, for example, did the, did the Kremlin tamper with Litvinenko sushi? <laughs> the poison. I think the line is when you get your cup of coffee, you go, uh, or you get your cup of coffee and you go, oh. <laughs> what I would do for revenge is I'd get the mug, right? I wouldn't tamper with the coffee, right? But I'd just little tap every day, I'd just tap the handle with like a little toffee hammer or something. <laughs> and over the course of a couple of years, <laughs> it would loosen and loosen, and one day they'd pick it up, and then I'd go, yes. <laughs> OK, true or false? I think it's false. I think it's less than that. You think? I think it's true, I would. OK, we'll go with true. I reckon, True. Yeah. False. We think it's false. <laughs> <laughs> you're overruling. OK, you're going false. I can tell you the answer is false. Yeah. <laughs> yes, only 5% of receptionists have taken revenge by tampering with their boss's coffee. They say revenge is best served cold and revenge is sweet. So, really, what they're saying is revenge is ice cream. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Jason's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. Worst thing to happen at a wedding. Is it saving your brother's life, but then getting run over in a process and then dying in OB's arms? Because <laughs> you died at a That's wedding. That's exactly what happens, yeah. So, so, you've been written out of this thing? Is that what's happened? What do they say? No, they're keeping him in after he's died, Jimmy. <laughs> He's, play he's playing a coffee table for the next six years. <laughs> I am going back, though. I'm going back to direct it. Do that they direct Hollyoaks? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought it was just done with CCTV cameras. <laughs> what would make you cry at a wedding? Is it when the first song they play is I still haven't found what I'm looking for? <laughs> I reckon if the bride gets taken off by an eagle... Uh, uh... <laughs> And then the church is getting smaller and smaller. Ah! Ah! And then... Ah! <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. It would make the bride cry. The groom was set with a chief bridesmaid. Correct. That's oh. the right answer. Oh. Oh. Yes, the worst thing that can happen at a wedding is the groom goes off with a bridesmaid. Of course, the biggest wedding of the year was Wayne and Colleen's. Colleen warned the stag party not to play any pranks on Wayne that would ruin the wedding photos. I'm afraid to say, Colleen, that ship has sailed. <laughs> Britain's favourite word. <laughs> Knockers, fanny, tits, flange. <laughs> I wanted to game before Frankie. <laughs> 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 It's our, it's our favourite receptionist from earlier's back. <laughs> I think it's gusset. It's saucy, but it's not revolting. Is this what you put in the phone cards? Saucy, but not revolting. Yes, gusset. gusset. <laughs> it's derived from the Latin. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> That's Latin, isn't it? Bollocks. Is it? No, old Latin, yeah. Old Latin, yeah. From the <laughs> east end of Latin. <laughs> 
It describes a stupid or foolish person. Knobhead. <laughs> Begins with an N. Nincompoop. Right answer. Uh, yes! <laughs> yes, Britain's favourite word is nincompoop. Number three on the list is mum. As in, I fucked your mum, you nincompoop. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean Lee and Vanessa have five points, Jason, Frankie and Matt have five points. It's a dead heat. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>10 cats a show about opinion polls surveys and statistics did you know for example three percent of people have answered their mobile phone while making love sorry can't talk now just going into a tunnel <laughs> 50 percent of the british population are dieting at any one time sadly not lunchtime <laughs> and according to estimates google's index contains as many as 25 billion web pages i don't want to worry anyone but i've just pressed print all <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean, Claudia, Phil, what have the nation been talking about this week? Wimbledon. Everyone's been talking about Wimbledon. They all got excited about that little boy, Murray. He was doing well. Big whooping, Murray mound, kissing himself, Popeye, and then not. Are you just doing word association, aren't <laughs> you? Yes, yes. I found an Andy Murray slightly irritating. You found him irritating? The whole kissing of the muscles and all of that. His actual aim, I read this, it's quite funny, he said he credits his, uh, his newfound health to his diet. He said, and at one lunch sitting, he had 42 pieces of sushi, but he's hoping to get to 60 pieces of sushi. <laughs> That's what he wants. And I just got this idea, you know those machines that fire tennis balls at you? Yeah. <laughs> he just gets one of those and fills it with sushi and just stands there going... <laughs> <laughs> There was actually six complaints into the BBC because uh, Nadal kept scratching his arse during the... Uh... <laughs> As if someone from the BBC is going to go out and go, excuse me, can you stop picking your arse? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing about his style of tennis is about his balance, which comes from his bottom. I think it's integral to the tennis, and Claudia probably agrees, as well as a tennis connoisseur. And, yes. And a, and a lady who likes to find bottom. <laughs> but, but I think you need to focus on his bottom. I don't understand who these people are who bothers to complain. My favourite complaint was on the channel Babe Station, where the three women have the boobs out, they've got a pair of knickers on. People ring up and, 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 and get off right for £1.50 a minute. Now, some bloke complained because one of the women showed a little bit of front garden, right? And again, at what point are you watching going, oh, this is brilliant, this is... Oh, no, you've gone too far now! <laughs> Do you know what me and Gabby did recently? <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> me and Gabby did an evening with Sven Goran Eriksson. What do you mean an evening? For charity. <laughs> and you did like a Q&A thing, didn't did you? Did you not get paid? <laughs> 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 oh, Jason, you're so new to this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wimbledon's one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it is. The most talked about thing is Wimbledon. Andy Murray could have beaten Nadal, all he needed was a slightly different strategy and a magic racket strung with dreams. 
The crowd at Wimbledon got right behind Andy Murray as they queued at the exit. <laughs> Jason, Gabby, Mark, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Well, I think it's got to be the Royals. They're on their arse, aren't they? They've got no money. Apparently, they're so strapped for cash that they were thinking about setting up a premium rate phone line. Uh, what was that? News, what what are you wearing? A tiara. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that getting off? Have you got my scepter in your hand? Yeah, it was like, it was a bit weird. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. you'd have to ring it, wouldn't you? You'd have to ring it. Just a, Dial one for one. <laughs> Dial two for a racist rant from one's husband. <laughs> for Prince Harry, press a hash key. You know what I mean? Yeah. It does seem extraordinary, but they are saying they're strapped for cash. They don't have any money. Well, can't they do a sponsored run or something? <laughs> oh. I think they should what? do a calendar. The Queen yes. should do a calendar, yeah. and over this nipple, she has a scepter, and that nipple, a corgi's nose. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But it's ironic, because you've got Charles trying to save the planet, obviously. Yeah. And he's filling his car up with wine Wine and cheese, and cheese yes. Of um, course you are, Charles. Of <laughs> yeah. course you are. <laughs> <laughs> filling his car up? With cheese. The bloke has finally gone mental. <laughs> he, he talked for plants for years, we let it go, we let it go. He swapped Diana for Camilla, we let it go, right? <laughs> he's gone too far, too far this time. If I swapped Diana for Camilla, you mean his wife tragically died? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look and see whether the uh, Royals' finances is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is the story that the royals are apparently strapped for cash. In other royal news, the naval ship carrying Prince William has seized £40 million worth of cocaine. So, 200 sailors and £40 million worth of cocaine. It's either the biggest drug bust in naval history or Elton John has fallen off the wagon. <laughs> in other news, Amy Winehouse has joined the Navy. Sean, Claudia, Phil, what else have the nation been talking about? Is it the bloke, uh, the examiner, who gave someone a mark? They wrote F off on their exam. It's the only thing they wrote. And he gave... The guy got 7.5% because it showed rudimentary skills. <laughs> and he got 11% if he'd put an exclamation mark. And if he wrote, to whom it may concern, fuck off, he'd have passed. That's extraordinary. So he got 7.5% for writing... F fuck off. off. But... To, be fair, to be fair, though, the question was, yes. what should Piers Morgan do? So... <laughs> If there was when, any kind of pronunciation mark that I don't like, it's an exclamation mark. You could never <laughs> date somebody who sent you a text and then ended it with an exclamation well, Claudia, mark. Well, Claudia, he was doing his GCSE, so you shouldn't be dating him, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> but the justification for the examiner said, for an attempt to answer the question, it's better than leaving the page blank. And I thought, that's not the case, is it? You know, if you don't know the answer to something, it's better to be quiet rather than go, fuck off, isn't it? <laughs> well, you've got a mastermind, and they said... Uh, <laughs> what... Yeah, did they repeal the corn laws? You go, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you get a point for that. <laughs> well, you've, just, you've just upped the ratings of that show. Yeah. Well, That'd be yeah, amazing. Yeah, OK, you passed on three, told me to fuck off six times. <laughs> <laughs> the winner. Be brilliant. I can tell you that um, this wasn't one of the most talked about things. What? Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> This is the story that a GCSE student was given 7.5% for writing an obscenity on an exam paper. When he received his results, he got a C, a U, an N and a B in maths. <laughs> Over to you, Jason. What else have the nation been talking about? Madonna, will she, won't she, are they, aren't they, her and Guy? Yeah, this has been talked about quite a lot this yeah, week. Yeah, she's in the middle of her sticky and sweet tour, which, if you think, is actually the description of a Werther's original. And she's about old enough for Werther's originals now, isn't she? She probably keeps a packet. In her bra, <laughs> isn't it? Back at work, <laughs> like you can see it now. Yeah. I made a fool of the world of men. <laughs> oh, you're <he's> lovely. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gay. <laughs> Got away. That may be the best impression of Madonna <laughs> I've ever seen. I think it's really sad, though, because I thought that was one of those. Oh! Don't believe... I don't believe it. They just haven't been photographed together. She said in a statement this week, didn't she? Oh, what are you walking like? Oh, <laughs> you're lovely. I think maybe she would have a Werther's bracelet that you could... A lick. They used to get those bracelets, didn't you? The elastic ones with, um... <laughs> oh, yes! That you bit off! It's nice when you remember something from the past, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> 
the boys are pretending they didn't eat sweets when they were little. Yeah, that's right. I'm pretending I didn't eat sweets. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Madonna and Guy Ritchie is up there. Yes. Yes, one of the most talked about things this week, Madonna and Guy Ritchie are rumoured to be having marriage difficulties. Some say Madonna is having a midlife crisis. Midlife? Yeah, if she lives to be 147. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, what else have people been talking about? Is it uh, Big Brother? There's loads of things going on, like there's that zoo task this week, which was brilliant. Uh, well, and, they, and at the same time, the nominations came out. So, at one point, there was just a slightly chubby seal uh, consoling another seal. Just like going, it's all right, don't worry about it, we all love you. <laughs> it's really weird, it's like a porn version of March of the Penguins. It's really <laughs> odd. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Big Brother is up there. <laughs> yes, Big Brother continues. Jen and Bex dressed up as seals in this week's task. In other news, Greenpeace have come out in support of seal clubbing. <laughs> Mario's volunteered to be the zookeeper on the basis that he's worked with animals before. Dogging is not working with animals, Mario. <laughs> I'm joking, we've got no evidence that Mario has been dogging. If I went to the gym, I could end up looking like Mario. There's a great cafe there, does cheap chips. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about? Is it the NHS? It's very difficult to get an NHS dentist, and a lot of people now are extracting teeth more than they, they're doing sort of... Uh, repair work on teeth. They're just they're going, well, we just take it out. Yes. Well, imagine what happens in my party. It's probably a communication problem because the only thing you ever say in dentists is, ah. So, ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I don't go to the dentist, I'm allergic. Well, I went seven years ago. You went seven him, years ago? And he said, I'm going to have to give you three fillings. I got nervous. I said, I've got to feed the meter and I haven't been back. Really? <laughs> I hope he's not still stuck there, yeah. boy. <laughs> So I think I had a dodgy one once who was a bit too, I don't know. <gasps> I realise this is more of a panel show than counselling, but let's... <laughs> what happened? I mean, all I'm saying is there was a lot of, tell me whether this happened. I don't know, it wasn't fun. My mouth was open, it was like my wedding night all over again. I haven't been back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, they've attempted to sort of deregulate dentistry like they did with uh, opticians, but obviously they can't. It's a much more qualified job. And also that there is one tooth in your head, I don't know if you noticed, but it's actually connected to your spine. And uh, dentists oh. are the only ones who know where that is. It's not, it's not even on the internet. And if you pull it out, you, you end up walking like a cat. <laughs> and that's sure, why... can you not try and scare team members? Because <laughs> poor Claudia now is going to you pull walking. that... I think it's this one. I think it's this one. But they, they only the dentists walking know. Walking like a cat. How would walking like a cat well, what look? happens is you pull it out and it <laughs> makes your spine go like that yeah, and then you, you walk on all fours. <laughs> That's why only dentists can do dentistry. They can't open it up like they have with other things, like roofing. And um, <laughs> there's only a few people know about this. The government know. Oh. They, they, they know. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether failing dentistry is one of the most talked about things this week. Yeah. Yes, indeed it is. This is the story that NHS dentists are failing the British public. A spokesman for the British dental industry, a Mr Shane McGowan, said something about Christmas and then passed out. <laughs> I brush after every meal and my dentist says my hair looks lovely. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean's team have two points, Jason's team have three points. <laughs> Our next round is called Pick of the Polls. Jason, you ought to go first. What do you want to answer a question on? Let's go Jeremy Kyle. In a poll to find out the worst camping companion, Jeremy Kyle came second. Mm. Who came first? Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Carr's a horrible little yeah. man, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And I, you ever watch his show? He always has people on, and it, it really sort of, it's a real sort of freak show, isn't he? He's really sort of preying on a, the sort of complete disaster of their lives. And he always yeah. says he's helping people. And I was thinking, he's helping people in the same way as if someone needed an ambulance, you kicked them nearer the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of yeah. booted them. You go, well, I'm yeah. actually getting you nearer aid, but I'm not actually really helping you, am I? He's a horrible little scumbag, isn't he? <laughs> oh. Who's more annoying than him? <laughs> Who's, who's more annoying? Yeah, that's what, that's what the question is. No, I'm asking. I'm just saying out <laughs> Oh, will you fucking sit here then, love? <laughs> Did a bit of camping. I went to watch the Grand Prix at Silverstone. Oh, the, like oh, the Grand Prix? The Grand Prix. Oh, great, no, because yeah. I forgot what it was. But then, whoa, cool. radical. <laughs> And uh, so we decided, my then boyfriend and I, that we'd go in a tent. <laughs> and at Silverstone, the very rich people come in with helicopters in the morning. How do helicopters work again? <laughs> oh. 
I thought I was, I'd woken up in Vietnam or something. Mugabe. You're not far off with that. Oh, Dave, Dave Mugabe. Edi <laughs> Amin. OK, a uh, most wanted man in the world. Oh, Osama Bin Laden. Correct answer. Bin Laden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The worst camping companion would be Osama Bin Laden, surprisingly. That's nonsense. He's very outdoorsy. He'd be yeah. really yeah, useful. Yeah, you're right. He's been right. outdoors for years. He'd yes. be fantastic. <laughs> I leave Ted now. I get massive dinner for us. Yeah. Which I will cook brilliantly. I'd go as far as say I would like to go camping with... If, Osama, if you're out there, you're on, mate. <laughs> Osama Bin Laden has been number one on the FBI's most wanted list for the last seven years. Number two is Rihanna with Umbrella. <laughs> OK. Sean, Claudia, Phil, what do you want to answer a question on? Chips, please, Jimmy. Chips, please. <laughs> what do the nation prefer, chips or poetry? Chips. No, this is That's a trick question. No, of course it's not. People are going to go chips, aren't they? Oh, people chips. Are, people yeah. eat chips all the time. There's chip shops everywhere. There's yeah. no poetry shops. Good point. No. <laughs> you don't see people drive out and going, bloody hell, poetry shop's shut. Can't believe it. <laughs> you outside. Terrible poetry shop back there. God, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, there's a really good poetry shop just up the road there. Much better poetry. Yeah. Can I have yeah. a selection yeah. of haiku <laughs> and a bit of cod, please? <laughs> Extra crispy. Yeah. It's obviously, chips. it's chips. Um, OK, so chips or poetry, you're going, what do you think? Do you think people prefer to be seen as somebody who likes I poetry? I think they show But actually, off. they read chips. Because it's... Because <laughs> it should be. Poetry, what do people like reading? If it was, what yes. do you like reading? Yes. I'd go poetry. Yes. But you can't eat poetry, can you? But you can read chips, because if they come in newspaper... As John Dunn said, oh. man is not an island. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Isle of Man? <laughs> <laughs> We had to say we could choose from anyone in the world for our question, and their question was, what's better? <laughs> something really nice or something no-one likes? <laughs> chips. All right, you're going chips. All right. Chips. I can tell you that 80% of the British public prefer chips. Of course they do. I don't know much about poetry, but I know what I like. Chips. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Sean, Phil and Claudia have three points. Jason, Gabby and Mark have four points. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panelists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Here is a musical interpretation of horoscopes. Yeah, that's what I said, to illustrate the statistic. Born to be bold, I'm the sign of the brave. One hero alone with a whole world to save. I am, I am, I am the ram. I am. The Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Don't want the raggedy, the cheap, and the shoddy. I like to take good care of my body. The diet calls for a remedy. Who watches scales more so than me? Lib, 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 run, lib, 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 run. <laughs> Live, 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 brand, live, 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 brand. Gregarious, hilarious, Aquarius. Pa 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 Pisces, pa 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 Pisces, pa 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 Pisces, pa 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 Pisces, pa 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 Pisces. That was a special treat. Was I the only one going, do mine, do mine? <laughs> <laughs> they rhymed everything, and then when they got to Pisces, they just went, ah, pa 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 Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> right, your related statistic. Uh, if they could predict the future, 26% of people would like to know how they're going to die. What do you think, true or false? I think if you knew you were going to die, you could get your last words in order. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Claudia, yes. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Claudia's in the House of Parliament. <laughs> yeah. 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 Say something profound, don't you? Don't don't we just go. That looks a bit close. Or no, apparently the Japanese eat them all the time. Or you know, you, you want to say something good, don't you? My granddad said, "Knock knock." And no. He went, and he went, <laughs> <laughs> and was going, and it's a shame because he was a funny bloke. But it was a good one. <laughs> I had a very embarrassing incident at my granny's funeral because I embarrassing incident. Yes, Ooh. I had to uh, do a reading. Oh. And How does that work? <laughs> 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 oh, reading, yes. I see how that would work. You don't do this on the BBC, and now we're looking at golf. 
<laughs> and then it's the judo. <laughs> and the night before the funeral, my dad said, oh, we found this, this lovely reading and we'd like you to do this. So I stood up and in front of the congregation, I said, I'm going to read something I found in Nana's drawers. <laughs> the best thing for me to know how other people die. Yeah. 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 I'd like to know when Amy Winehouse dies so I can start buying the newspapers again. Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, OK. <laughs> if you could predict the future, 26% of people would like to know how they're going to die. What do you think? It's I right, think it actually. sounds right. You OK, you're going true? Yeah, we're going to yeah. go true. OK, yeah. what do you think? We're going to go no. Yes! It's just to make it interesting. Yeah! You're saying Let's cost. go off-road. We're going off-road. Yeah. Whoa! 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 We're going to say no. <laughs> is that for my benefit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you the answer is true. 26% of people would like to know how they're going to die. If you're Scottish and you don't want to know how you're going to die, look away now. Heart attack. <laughs> Can I just add something? I just feel a little few pangs of guilt that you might think I was making fun of my granny's funeral. Actually, it was a really good laugh. Everybody had a great day. <laughs> and because they're Welsh, they all said, Gran would have loved that, Gabby. If she wasn't dead, yeah. <laughs> Can I just say that I was not molested by a dentist? Because <laughs> my parents would feel really guilty about Dr. Rosen. OK. <laughs> and also, can I... Can I... <laughs> just, just so I'd say, there isn't a tooth in your head. <laughs> I'm sorry. And also, Madonna, no, Madonna has a very high-protein macrobiotic diet. <laughs> would completely preclude her eating sugar in pretty much any refined form. So Mom. she would therefore not eat Werther's original. Yes. <laughs> so at the end of that round, and after much soul-searching, it's three points for Sean's team and five points to Jason's team. Yeah. And the winner is, is the name of our final round, Top Luxury Women Want in Their House. Is yeah. it a beauty therapist? Then? Like a tiny man who will just do your nails? Here, here! <laughs> 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 I know what it is. Go on. It's a talking cat that knows secrets. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my luxury. The cat come up and go, guess what? <laughs> 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 what? Come over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> you go, what is it? You go, no, first, get me some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gloria. This crossed the <laughs> <laughs> Is it? What's the sequel going to be? I don't know. I <laughs> I'm not a cat. Is it that? No. <laughs> Is it a hot tub? Oh, no. Come on, Gabby, you're a girl. It's, OK, it's, it's connected to the bedroom. It's an ensuite. Correct answer. <laughs> Top person to put on a British banknote. Um, the Chuckle Brothers. And then what you could do yeah, is you could one, have like one, one yeah. on the front, one on the other yeah, side, yeah. and then in Latin, to you, to me, ad mihi ad tibi. <laughs> 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 to you, to me, to me, to you in Latin. I think so. Well, you just got to think what's the dative. So then it's obviously yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> That's what I do for my day job. They bring me phrases for banknotes and I translate them into Latin. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a slow decade. <laughs> <laughs> what about a little mirror, so it was you. Oh. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Every time oh. you go that, you go, oh, I'm on a banknote, look, no, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, I'd be brilliant, huh? Simple person. You're right, man. I'd be brilliant. OK, okay. top person to put on a British banknote. Diana. Correct. Oh, oh. good one. Yes, the person Brits would most like to see on a banknote is Princess Diana. But that's ridiculous. You can't have a picture of a dead person on one side of a note and then the person that killed them on the other. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Philip and Claudia have three points, Jason, Gabby and Mark have seven points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>
superstar DJ Johnny Vaughn, <laughs> Olympic player Tony Hawk, and their team captain John Locke. And facing them tonight, all rise, it's Duncan James. And here's Johnny Vegas, and their team captain Jason Manford. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Oh, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 8% of women say they've never worn the most expensive thing they've bought? That's because it's a dishwasher. 43% <laughs> of Brits would like to use alternative energy sources. I've just bought a wind turbine. Now I just need someone to plug it in. <laughs> and 21% of women will not make love with the lights on. Problem is, they come on automatically when I open the car door. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason, Duncan, Johnny, what have the nation been talking about this week? Big Brother. Yeah. But are you, are you, you're a yeah, big fan, there's three you? new housemates gone in. Three new housemates. Belinda, <laughs> Belinda and Belinda. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow! <laughs> oh, it's mental. Did you oh, hear that song? That was phenomenal. Dooby dooby doo. Be quiet, Belinda. <laughs> She's, She's nice. lovely, lovely. She is lovely. nice. Yeah. yeah. Bubbly. 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 And I don't mean, you know, effervescent personality, I mean shaped like a bubble. <laughs> But she's an incredibly annoying individual. And she even annoys you when she's sleeping. Yeah, she, she snores it's horrible, like isn't it? it's yeah, it's horrible. Like, Although in fairness, you are watching people snore, don't yeah, you? Might I, wanna, yeah. hey. <laughs> you might want to think about getting blue back together. That's around. all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm busy watching people sleep. <laughs> Sarah's <laughs> philosophy. Uh, I'm not a big bit. fan. Of, I'm not a big fan of Sarah. Her philosophy is she went. I take every day as it comes, and I thought, well. That's just... You have to do that. I'm like I, like... I like to grab three weeks at a time and then just sit waiting for another couple of days. <laughs> yeah, that is her saying, I am willing to go along with the laws of nature. <laughs> I can tell you Big Brother is not one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, that was a waste of... But, of course, Big Brother continues. New housemate Belinda is perhaps the most naturally talented person I've ever wanted to push off a bridge. <laughs> Since Belinda entered the house, Mikey has been busy wishing away his few remaining senses. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Johnny, Connie Huck. What else have the nation been talking about? I think everybody's been talking about the Formula One uh, chief, Max, Max Mosley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Max Mosley's um, orgy. Oh. I like to say, we're doing, we're doing S and M. He said it's perfectly harmless. So if that's the case, he wants to get his money back. <laughs> well, they might not be, but they could be Nazi-themed sex orgies. He's denying it. He's denying it yeah. vehemently. He's saying, we were just doing a bit of S&M, and obviously it was in the papers one day. He said, this hasn't been in the papers long enough. I'm going to take them to court. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope at some point someone in court says, this wasn't just any sex, this was S&M sex. <laughs> I like the idea that he said, Max Mosley said he'd been doing this for 45 years. Man and boy. 45 years, he said, and his wife didn't know. And I like the idea of him coming home. How does he explain that his yeah. ass looks like a grilled panini? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell on the barbecue at work yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, have you ever tried the S&M thing? I, I haven't. I didn't actually know what S&M meant till the other day. Such a lie. Serbia and Montenegro. Would you say no? <laughs> let's, let's have a look and see if Max Mosley is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, this is the story. Motor racing boss Max Mosley is suing a newspaper for claiming his S and M sex session was Nazi related. I appreciate Max Mosley's right to do whatever he wants in his free time, but I can't believe anyone actually gets pleasure from Formula One. <laughs> Uh, OK, uh, Jason, Duncan and Johnny, what have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, food. Food. Gordon Brown has mm. said uh, that we're wasting too much food. This is about three weeks after he said we're all getting fat. Now he's changed his mind, now he's saying we're wasting too much food. And, you know, of all the problems he's got, he's obviously become Prime Minister and gone, oh, what shall I fix first? Uh, global terrorism, knife crime... Oh, no, you've thrown them bananas out, they've still got a bit of yellow on them. <laughs> Mental. What you should do, if you don't want to waste food, is do what I do. I just buy parmesan. Never goes off. 
<laughs> Even if you, you can put it on a rooftop in Nairobi, That's it won't go <laughs> off. <laughs> you know what gets me right? I read in the paper this week that we waste a billion pounds in food every year, right? Mm. Now, which sounds scary, doesn't it, right? But I've worked it out, right? That, if you think, how many, how many zeros is in a billion? That's nine zeros, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A billion pound, right? How many is there of us? F 56 million, right? One, two, three, four, Hang five, on. six. That's a million, right? Yep. Yeah. So we waste twice. 56. 17 pound 85 a year, right? So, boobless. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> not doing it properly, right? <laughs> so I worked it out. Per person, per day, we waste four pence a day. I couldn't give a flying monkey's to be honest. <laughs> Jason, there's certain people that upset that balance. I buy champagne and, like, chase homeless people. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nightmare. Right? I go shopping and I do my, my... go around. I love it. I love going shopping around with my little trolley, around Sainsbury's. <laughs> I do. And I love the little two-for-one deals you get. <laughs> Put them in. <laughs> but... Do you bring... Do you tend to bring a couple of friends with you to do exactly the same no. moves? No. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether food waste is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, this is the news that Gordon Brown has told us all to stop wasting food. The chair of the National Obesity Forum broke when a big fat fatty sat on it. <laughs> OK, uh, Sean, Connie and Johnny, uh, what yes. else have the nation been talking about? Connie and Johnny. Is it what the baby oh, yeah. man? Oh, baby, yeah. The man had a baby. But where did it come out? Where did it come out? Yes, I, mean, I know where came out of it. Well, he's the got man's a... vagina. Did it? Yeah. He's got man a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a manny or a munt. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, what actually he... classifies what it? Because he's classifies... got a womb, but not a... He's got a womb, but yeah. he's been living as a man for 20 years. If you need a solicitor to back up your argument that you're a man, yeah. you're not a man, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, he's not a man until he can parallel park, piss standing up, and walk past a shoe shop without popping in. So, there we go. We've got a picture of him. What, he he what? looks like an inflated George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another picture of him. We've got another picture of him. There he is. <laughs> they actually look quite similar. That's the gag. That's the joke. Oh. It's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They look a bit like you. You are adorable, aren't you? <laughs> They complained that uh, healthcare professionals were unsupportive. They actually had to get inseminated. That they were helped by a vet. Yeah, they were worried the story wasn't weird enough. <laughs> I like the fact that for a brief moment, a girl was trapped inside a woman, trapped inside a man. It's yeah. like a, some kind of like nightmarish Kinder Egg, isn't it? <laughs> I'd like to be there for the uh, Birds of the Bees talk in a few years because yeah. where uh, where do bees come from, Daddy, Mummy? Well. Uh, <laughs> when a woman who used to be a man loves another woman who's making an exception this time, uh, like to get together, <laughs> they uh, go to the vet, get artificially inseminated, and uh, that's where you come from. Night! Bye! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very, it was a very tricky So It's a liberal minefield, and I think we've dealt with the subject very sensitively. Let's have a look and see if a man giving birth is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, this is the story that a man, Thomas Beatty, has given birth. I was going to get him a card, but Clinton's has really let me down on this one. <laughs> Two more things to get. Fingers on buzz as well, so the nation be talking about. <laughs> the church. Go on, tell me more. Female bishops or something. Isn't Fe it? Female bishops, and there's been a big hoo-ha about it because uh, they were saying we should get promoted. And let's be honest, there's only so far you can go within the church. If you go vicar, bishop, archbishop, you're never going to get the top job, are you? That's God, isn't it? There's no... Uh... <laughs> and he's put his son in, hasn't he? Nepotism. I... Yeah, That's why exactly, I hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be brilliant being priest, cos, like, confession is essentially gossip, innit? You know what I mean? Like, it's been two weeks since my last confession. Is it? Go on, tell us some more. <laughs> <laughs> I slept with a neighbour, have ya? No way! <laughs> OK, a few more bishops, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, this is the story that the church has voted in favour of female bishops. The church wanted to move forward on female bishops, but bishops can only move diagonally. <laughs> uh, one more thing to get fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about? Is Jason. it um, criminals? Criminals. Apparently, they're not going to be sent to prison now. They're saying, "Oh, don't worry about it." 
Yeah, this is the thing. Burglars aren't going to be sent to prison. What are they going to do instead? They'll put them in the army. And if I was in the army and I was fighting, I think that'd be a real insult all the time. So what they're going to do with these kids are absolutely unsocial little yachts. Yeah, let's arm them. That they should join the army. I think, if I was in the army, I'd think, oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, cheers. I do I've think... done this as a career, and now you're saying it should be like a punishment. <laughs> That's a thing. We're in Afghanistan, up I... against it. They're going, we've got a lot of shoplifters coming in now. <laughs> the two of them are coming down here. A lot of hooded knife boys are coming in from the first platoon of the fucking Bermondsey Southeast Fusiliers, and they're going to take on Helmand Province. <laughs> I'm just saying it's an insult to our forces. Every there time is, you say but... the answer, I'll tell you what, sling them in the army. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Am I on question time? <laughs> you will never be on question time. <laughs> I'm going to you that. It's not going to I can tell you that criminals not being sent to prison is not one of the most talked about things this week. It was on the list, but not in the top five. Also in the news this week, Broadmoor Prison is to hold a talent contest. One of the inmates wanted to do his sawing a woman in half trick, but that's what got him into Broadmoor in the first place. <laughs> I was interested in that story because the interesting thing about it is they're going to do Britain's Got Talent, and normally the thing in Britain's Got Talent is Broadmoor's Got Talent. Yeah, it's gonna, they're going to do Broadmoor's Got Talent, but normally what they do is they have some kind of sentimental backstory, so you tolerate their average warblings, don't you? They've got some yeah. story like yeah. he's bullied at school, yeah, so he's... or he came from a very difficult background. There. But with, with Broadmoor's Got Talent, they'll have Peter Sutcliffe. He's one of the country's leading psychopaths. Anyway, be, take be it away, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the children are a future. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing to get fingers on buzzers whilst the nation we talking about this week. I think the number one will be Wimbledon, the greatest final of all time. So it was the greatest final of all time. Final. I was there, it was it's very good. I think saying the, the greatest tennis match of all time is like saying that's my that's the tastiest water I've ever drank. <laughs> so, <laughs> much of a muchness, to be honest. I listened to it in the back of a taxi. Oh, it was, it was, a it was good on match. the. It was on the. Uh... What were you doing at a taxi for nine hours? Yeah. <laughs> a dogging marathon. It's was a long it? way to. <laughs> it's, it's weird commentary on a tennis match. It's not like football where they go Beckham to Rooney, Rooney to Owen, goal. It's it's like Nadal to Federer, Federer to Nadal, <laughs> Nadal to Federer, rain, Federer to serve. <laughs> <laughs> nine hours. <laughs> It's a serious point. But they're saying in the papers, they're looking at how close Nadal and Federer's eyes are together and they're comparing with Borg and the great tennis players of all time. They're saying that all great tennis players have eyes very close together. Over the years, with, like, sort of natural selection, one yeah. day we'll just have Cyclops just playing tennis. Yeah. Just one big eye in the middle. Again. <laughs> I want to be a Cyclops, push man together. <laughs> push him that way, good. Make it happen. <laughs> Push me eyes together. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm doing myself, you <laughs> lazy bastard. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Wimbledon is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, the most talked about thing this week. People knock Andy Murray, but he is arguably the fifth best tennis player in the world. Unfortunately, the four people better than him keep turning up. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean Steam have three points, Jason Steam have two points. Nice. Our next round is called Pick of the Poles. Sean, what picture do you fancy answering on? Which man's bottom. To... The man's bottom, OK. In a poll to find the ideal place where naturists would like to spend a hot afternoon, back garden came second, what came top? I went to a naturist place once in Holland, and I, was, I, didn't, <clears throat> I didn't know I was going there, but they took our clothes, <laughs> and I was expecting a towel back, and there was nothing. Yeah. Right. And they had, like, an English-style pub. Right by the bar, there's a pool table. And <laughs> i tell you something. Naked pool, yeah, is the most shocking thing you've ever seen. When they go down, they size it up, they're like, right, like that. <laughs> really, having good, really having a good look around. And this guy, I'm not kidding, it was a big pool table, he went down the pool table like that, and his bollocks, <laughs> his bollocks were in the middle <laughs> pocket. <laughs> It's got to be a temptation to do a trick shot, isn't it? Or put two fifties in the slot and go... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Connie, where would you like to be naked? Uh, I think naturists would like to be on a beach or in a park. I imagine naturists are quite, uh, quite the show-offs as well. If they come over with a couple of uh, coffees, you know what I mean? Like, coffee, anyone? No, I'm all right. Donut? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so where are you going to go for? Jim, I think it's probably some kind of naturist club. I will give you that. Yes, the ideal place naturists would like to spend a hot afternoon is the British Naturist Club. I've seen a naturist back garden when she bent over to pick up the volleyball. 
Jason, what do you like the look of? If Duncan wants to go for ABBA. You've chosen ABBA. In the week that Mamma Mia was released, we asked the studio audience, do you think that ABBA should reform? Yes or no? They've got a new uh, film out, haven't they, Mamma Mia? Yeah. That's just They were out. offered a billion pounds to reform. A billion a pounds? A billion. A trillion it a was. Billion. It was a, a multi <laughs> mil <laughs> trillion billion. <laughs> what I never realised, I never realised how much taller the guys are than the women. <laughs> And one of them looks like a hobbit, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> she lived with a stalker. The only fit one. And I realised it was a stalker. And was then she asked him room? to leave. <laughs> and guess what? He was reticent. <laughs> Did he actually say that? She said, leave. He went, I'm reticent. <laughs> I swear to God, sometimes I watch television, I watch proper documentaries. <laughs> the stalker's the perfect person to marry, cos they're into all the same things you are. You know, they're, they're always there for you. Yeah. Duncan, have you heard stalkers? Yeah, they're, they're weird, man. Yeah, that's stalkers. They're weird, yeah. It'd be good if they were yeah, always... Yeah, shit, innit? Like, some of them make you feel awkward, innit? <laughs> they? Oh, they just don't respect stalker. your boundaries, that's the problem. They don't respect your physical boundaries. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say there's enough reforms going on. Everyone's reforming every five minutes. I imagine you'll be at it in a few. No. No, not at all. Not fancy reforming. There was a big thing in heat the other week saying, please get back what, together. What, is it a Terminator? <laughs> is it going to become a puddle and then come back together? <laughs> I've been in love with a robot. <laughs> yes or no? No. What, no. Are you, what are you going with? Yes. I'm going with no. I'm going to go with Duncan from Blue. No. I can tell you the answer is no. 66% of our audience don't think ABBA should get back together. Well done, mate. Good work. Good work. If you haven't seen Mamma Mia, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's shit. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Johnny and Connie have four points. Jason, Duncan and Johnny have three points. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Here is a clip to illustrate the statistic. The difference between contemporary interviews and this programme is that my interviewees have total freedom of choice. <laughs> you seem to have a lot of connections with Scandinavia. Oh, yes, I am Norwegian. And does this mean you work there a lot? No, unfortunately, because the Opera House is practically bankrupt oh and they have no foreign artists and I am counted as a foreign artist because I oh. live in London. Oh, but do you ski? Oh, yes, I love skiing. I love to ski. Along as fast as I can. Thank you. <laughs> that was from the Channel 4 show Altered Image in 1983. <laughs> Your related statistic on this, okay? 78% of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. True or false? Where I live, 78% of people are not posh enough to go in a local spa. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a true stat. A lot of people know they're vermin. A lot of people... <laughs> no, a lot of people in this country, they, they Sorry, look themselves Mr. Vaughan. They say, do you know what? I'm vermin. <laughs> a lot of people know they're vermin. Yeah, and I'd say, I'm, I can't go to the opera, I am vermin. Well, I'm vermin and I've been to the opera. Were you selling choc ice? My wife's... Yeah. <laughs> I went to see Darren Brown, actually. Not really opera, though, is it? He does a big finish. Like, but he, um... No, it's weird, cos my mum got called up on stage and she always thought... She was like, oh, I don't feel posh enough to go to the theatre. And to be fair, you're not. Right, but we went, we went to the, we went anyway, right? And um, and it's like she got called up on stage by Darren, and uh, he went right sleep. Eventually went to sleep, but she had to slap him in the face to do this trick. But she didn't want to slap him in the face because she's a nice woman. And a bloke at the back of the room just went, "Fucking hit him, love, hit him, <laughs> smack him out." And Darren Brown turned around with a, like with a second gap. He just went, "You do that again, and I'll make you wet the bed for the rest of your life." <laughs> I thought, I reckon that night the bloke went home and his wife went, do you want a cup of tea before bed? And he went, do you know what, I'm going to leave it, to be honest. 78% so... <laughs> of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. Is that true or false? What do you think? True. We're going to go false. false. We're going true. Okay. You're going true, you're going false. false. I can tell you the answer is oh. false. Only 24% of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. See, told you. Uh, <laughs> and I could see it. My favourite part of the opera is the libretto. I always have a strawberry one during the interval. 
So at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and four points for Jason's team. Mm -hmm. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Biggest turn-off for women. Me. <laughs> Men with tails. It's not called a tail, is it? It's called a penis. Grow He's up. He's a dragon. <laughs> I think, you know, often, you know, men can make a mistake by uh, using... Like, if you go around to a girl's house, you use her toilet. It can spoil things, can't it? Best you do is say you're going to the toilet, but don't use it. And then come out and just go... <laughs> well, like, you've got a really... Just, I'm just going to... I need to actually go up... <laughs> so you go in there, you don't have one, and then you come out, and then later yeah. she goes, wow, he's so fragrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in a bar once, and they were doing speed dating downstairs, and I popped down to and the toilet, I had to go through this speed dating thing, and obviously press the bell, you've got three minutes, bing, and then you're done, right? And as I was walking past this table, I heard the bloke, uh, he went, uh, yeah, and so anyway, when I got there, uh, they were already dead. <laughs> went, three minutes. Ping, and I was like, you've got three minutes. Don't tell them about your dead friend story. Yeah, so what I do is, is I slice their beaks off, <laughs> cut their feet off, and feed them as much until they die. Ping! <laughs> it's farming, really. <laughs> <laughs> I inject their eyeballs with special fluid to make them grow faster. <laughs> Ping! <laughs> I can eat you. I know how to cut you up and eat you. <laughs> I would say in about 20 minutes, because I'm a trained boner. A boner works. <laughs> to the house. <laughs> Takes the bones out of animal and I can size you up like a pig or a cow and just strip the bones out of you and you'll be jointed and ready for sale in <laughs> 25 minutes, because that's what a boner does. Oh, Bing! <laughs> something that the woman will probably see if you went swimming. Is it having a pair of Speedos but the S's have come off? <laughs> Is it really, like, hairy? You're really hairy? Really it's hairy. Specific hairy area? Back. Hairy, hairy back. back, that's the right yeah. answer. Yeah. Hairy back. <laughs> Yes, the biggest turn-off for women is a hairy back. I was going to shave my back and then I thought, pluck it. <laughs> OK, next one. Biggest celebrity polluter. Oh. Is it the Transformers? <laughs> oh, God, God, they would be pretty, because they're a car and they're carbon a robot and they're, that's two carbon footprints. I know. Doctor Who. <laughs> Your world's brilliant, isn't it, Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> what? He He's... has a TARDIS, he turns up and he flies around the galaxy. Yeah, what fuel's on the TARDIS? Yeah. Nothing, because it's not real. <laughs> Whereas the Transformers are real. <laughs> is it Simon Cowell? Yes, it is. He's all, yes. Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest celebrity polluter is Simon Cowell. However, it's Louis Walsh that's responsible for the hole in the boys' own lair. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Johnny and Connie have four points, Jason, Duncan and Johnny are the winners with six points. Well done, then. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, after school, 33% of teenagers go back to an empty house, break a window, steal a DVD player and then go home? <laughs> the longest time spent in space is 803 days, and that's a record set by the moon. <laughs> and one in three Scottish girls is clinically obese, as are the other two. <laughs> Let's get started.
What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason, June, Michael, what have the nation been talking about this week? We reckon it's Canoe Man. And they keep calling him Canoe Man. He, he went out in a canoe five years ago once. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why is he canoe, man? I went on a donkey ride in 1986. No one calls me donkey, man, do they? <laughs> they call me donkey, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a joke thing, I've got well, a tiny he cock. he pretended to die in a canoe. He went away on the canoe and then he came back and he moved in next door. Did he actually move in next door? Yeah, I didn't know that. Door. Same house. Did that mean that his sons and stuff were saying things like, you know, now he's gone... I seem to see Dad's face everywhere I look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the garden. <laughs> there was a great bit in the papers that kept saying, not only has he got a new passport, but he joined the local library. <laughs> That's the ultimate deception. Like, he's taking a book out and he's going, I'm not even going to read it. I'm <laughs> crazy. I can't see what all the fuss is about. What, about no one's Frank? died? Have they? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's died. What's all this fuss? <laughs> He's the most famous person to fake his own death since Beadle, right? <laughs> and I think... Oh, yeah, we think he's dead, but the greatest trick he ever pulled was making us believe that he didn't exist, old Beadle. You wait till the Royal Variety performance. That's all I'm telling you. A little clue for you there. So you Even now, he's... if I put a conservatory up and a bearded man from the council comes round to tell me to take it down, I have a little look at his hands, make sure they're the same size. <laughs> i just have a check. Do you ever conceive us up there? <laughs> This is the story of canoe man John Darwin's wife. John Darwin faked his own death and lived happily for five years until he made the tragic mistake of steering a canoe up shit creek and then losing his paddle. <laughs> Sean, David, Chris, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it about Ronnie Wood shagging a 19-year-old Russian? Someone has got to tell the Rolling Stones that they are no longer sexually attractive men, I think, because they look like cigarette butts with bad hair now, basically. <laughs> I think Ronnie Wood, he's, he looks quite interesting. He looks like a blow-dried crow. <laughs> Someone's got a crow and given it a hairdo. I feel sorry for his wife, cos she's been with him for a long time and she said that she's now going to divorce him. And I think that if she's looking for someone younger, I'm available. <laughs> I'm everything that he's not, and she's going to be loaded when that divorce comes through. <laughs> He's a recovering alcoholic, but he's actually got a pub, yeah, I in think his he house. thinks the 12-step programme is the walk down the path to his pub. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what that's like trying to lose weight, but you've got a Greg's in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that wasn't the only celebrity break-up this week. There was uh, Lembit Oak Pick and the Cheeky, cheeky girl, girl, who have also uh, separated this week. Have you seen the mother with the girls? Basically, what's happened is Magritte, the mother, she has got these two <laughs> little girls and she has quite obviously plotted their entire yeah, life yeah. so they will seduce Liberal Democrats and they will have a career. She's much like the mother from Carrie. Yes. She's coming in the night with candles. Yeah. Wake up, Gabriella. <laughs> you must awake. What is it, mother? It is over. <laughs> you must get rid of Lembit. But I love him and I love his policies. It is over. You must go for leader now, Nick Clegg. <laughs> Let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, Ronnie Wood has dumped his wife for a 19-year-old Russian model. In his defence, she is a 19-year-old Russian model. <laughs> Jason, excuse me, Michael, what else have the nation been talking about? I think we quite like the, uh, the fact that Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have joined the Twins Club. I think that's going to be the news. top story. Well, of course, the first rule of Twins Club is... Uh, not allowed to talk about Twins Club. So. You know what the second rule of Twins Club is? Stop putting them in the same fucking clothes. They look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel really sorry for Jennifer Aniston. In all sorry of for this, Jennifer I'm Aniston. sure every woman in this room feels the same. I just feel... It just gets worse. It's never-ending. she got to have a go on Brad Pitt. That's something, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but then... She's got the memories. <laughs> baby was early, um, and I just had a baby. I don't want to focus on me too much, but... Yes. You've got, um, you've got your finger back. <laughs> that baby was late, so we had to in induce it naturally, and I had no idea that there are ways to do this. Did you know about this? Put a rusk outside a fanny, like that, and it just... <laughs> just spread things out, is it? I had to read up a bit about this sort of celebrity thing, and they're, they're called... You know this thing where they're couples and they join them up to create one Brangelina. name? But they're called Brangelina. Yeah. And uh, it's this sort of habit. There's some few other ones. And I think it's quite interesting, because, you know, if they didn't do that with... If they'd done that with Tony Blair and Shiri Blair, they'd be called Tory. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. 
Mm. Yeah. And if Peter Andre went out with Dido, they'd be called Pedo. <laughs> I tell you, it's Jennifer Aniston I feel sorry for. Yeah. I'm with you, June, and yeah. the sisters. Why, yeah. why do you feel sorry for Jennifer? I don't, I'm taking the piss. Yeah. <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, Brad Pitt, he said, oh, I'm delighted, and I thought, the best looking woman in the world. He's the best looking bloke in the world. Yeah. Now, surely. That's why I feel sorry for Jennifer. No, but when Aniston. two good looking people together, maybe the babies are proper ugly. <laughs> you know I mean? Maybe it gets to a point where they're so beautiful yeah, the baby your parents. has to be ugly. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> His dad is beautiful. Is he? Yeah. Oh, He's yeah. gorgeous. He turned me, your daddy's so gorgeous. <laughs> and look what happened. Mum. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got smacked on the head by a rusk when he was born. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see whether Angelina Jolie is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, Angelina Jolie has given birth to twins. Brad Pitt is said to be over the moon, elated and walking on air. He's fucked Angelina Jolie. <laughs> the only chance I have of cuddling Angelina Jolie is if I black up and check myself into a Mozambique orphanage. <laughs> so, well done, Junior. you got that top story? OK, Sean, your team to guess. What else have the nation been talking about? Is it uh, the uh, Dwayne Chambers, the, the, the uh, drug cheat, whether he's allowed to run in the Olympics? He was caught using uh, performance-enhancing drugs and uh, he served his time, but the British Olympic Association won't let him run in the Olympics. I don't think he's done anything that bad. It's not well, like yeah, he tried so to he's light... Cheated. He's cheated. He's cheated. Yeah, but he didn't try and light a crack pipe off the Olympic torch, is no. that? <laughs> Well, what he's saying, he's saying banning him from the Olympics is a restriction of his trade as a, as a, as a sprinter. An and to be fair, there isn't any other jobs he can do as a 100-metre, uh, you know, sprinter. I mean, a courier, <laughs> maybe, would be pretty good at that. Or, I was thinking, like, working for a company that can't afford internal email system. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So he yeah. could just go, you know, take that, Dwayne. <laughs> There's cakes on Marjorie's desk. <laughs> You know, someone who hasn't got a very good eyesight, right, and they're out having a picnic, he could work with them, they say, what's that in the distance? And they go, I can't quite see it. And he goes, don't worry. <laughs> Runs yeah. off, brings it back, brings it a bit closer. They go, oh, it's a tree stump. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a distance shrinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't understand, because the whole point of the 100 metres is you're running fast, so why do they have to all this with the, the take photos of when they finish and stuff? Why don't they just put the middles at the end and, and just put them on a table and then start, and then whoever gets the gold is the winner? <laughs> You've just made the Olympics better. <laughs> I think at the end of the 100 metres, it should just be a sheer drop. <laughs> and actually, the, the skill is stopping. Not yeah, because yeah, that would be the running exactly 100 metres. That would metres. be amazing. That it's would really... not be 10 seconds. No, they're doing, 100, they're doing 100 and a bit at the moment. 100, <laughs> bang on, or you're dead. And also... <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Walking still an Olympic sport because when I was a kid, walking yes. yeah, I think with a sport, and I never understood yeah. that because I've never seen anyone walk like in pro professional walking in real life. Well, people fundamentally don't want to run, don't they? If you're crossing the road and you're walking and you think the car might hit you, you don't run to save your life. You just hurry up a little bit, don't you? <laughs> you, don't <run> full. <laughs> you just hurry up. Yes, because you want to just miss. Oh, you see, I knew, I knew I had that under control. So you don't. Because so, what you should do is realise the car would kill you. You must set off as fast as you can to save your life and go. I'm alive, but you don't. You just go. Whoop! Just missed. Okay. <laughs> That's that, that yeah, Let's have a look and see whether Dwayne Chambers is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, he is. This is the story of Dwayne Chambers trying to overturn an Olympic ban. The side effects of steroids include sudden bursts of anger and shrunken genitals. Damn my tiny balls! <laughs> <laughs> OK, one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Is it Margaret Thatcher having, having a state funeral? Apparently. What do you think? Should she get a state funeral? I don't think it matters whether she has a state funeral. As long as the bitch is dead, that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like them to fire her out of a cannon, right, onto the walls of Buckingham Palace so she just splats like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what she... I'd like to do. Is she going to lie, lie there for two or three days? Uh, yeah, she'll lie there for th th three, four days even. Yeah. yeah. Depends how many people want to see her. I like the idea that, that there would a be. Permanent thing. But there would be this, this she lied state, people yeah, go past, and like, you know, every 50th person goes, woohoo! <laughs> and it's really quiet and respectful of them. Yeah! Oh, yay! <laughs> it's just you going round and round and round. <laughs>
So. I never met Margaret Thatcher. I've never been lucky enough to meet her. But when I was at school, I was at the age of primary school when we used to get free milk, and then free milk stopped. And I'm about, I was about six, seven, and I remember asking why would I get free milk anymore. And my mate at school said Margaret Thatcher stopped it. And I genuinely believed that was the name of a girl in another class. <laughs> <laughs> David, have you ever met Margaret Thatcher? No. Sean, you ever met her? Yeah, I, I, I've had an affair with her. I love her. That's, <laughs> it's not to do the political thing, she broke my heart. <laughs> I have. You've, you've met... I've met her twice. Is she on T4? <laughs> she on T4. <laughs> One of my friends went to a dinner at her house and apparently she said, oh, we have to wait for Dennis, we have to wait for Dennis. And no one could actually tell her, well, you know, Dennis kind of isn't around anymore. <laughs> They're all eating dinner. So then she taps him on his knee and she says, don't worry, I've remembered. Meaning she remembered he was dead. That's possibly the most depressing story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> the reason it's funny is because it's Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Anything sad that happens to her is funny. <laughs> she, she gets a fork in her eye, it's funny. <laughs> Let's see if Thatcher's funeral is up there. This is the story that Margaret Thatcher is to have a state funeral. Thatcher is going to be buried at the bottom of a man-made lake. Well, she will be once we finish pissing on her grave. <laughs> at the end of that round, Sean's team have three points, Jason's team have two points. <laughs> Our next round is called Pick of the Pole. All right, Sean's team, you want to go first? What do you like the look of? Chris, right. do you want to do your pick? Go on, then. Okay. Me. By the way, I'm the, I'm the one without the, the crown of thorns. <laughs> okay. 32% of Brits would like to watch Chris Miles. Kill. <laughs> no, of course not. If it was that, we'd... Eat. You'd have to be hungry. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'd rather be fat, Chris. <laughs> 32% <laughs> uh, of Brits would like to what Chris Miles? Kiss. K K it's not a kiss. Go on. Uh, listen to Chris Miles. Only 32. Say something nice. <laughs> it involves getting into your personal space. Oh, OK. 32% of Brits would like to... Climb in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of room there. Yeah, it's all personal space, isn't it? <laughs> Move in with. That's exactly the right answer. Hooray! Yes, 32% of Brits would like to share a flat with Chris Moyles. Chris has been censored in the past by broadcasting watchdogs for the inappropriate use of the word gay. What a bunch of benders. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what do you like the look of? Let's go Wilder Ogden from that documentary, Coronation Street. 63% of northern women have what? Um, a, pie, a pie fetish. <laughs> they like a bloke to dress up like a pie and come in, hello. <laughs> and it's different each night. I'm cheese and onion. <laughs> <laughs> What about rollers? Ro rollers? Mm. Curlers? Yeah. No, that's not, that's not it. It's Jennifer Aniston, yeah. I'd feel sorry but for is... <laughs> is it rickets? Have you been to the north? It's all right no, these it's days. It's all right, you know. It's got quite a similar climate and everything, hasn't it? Hairy balls. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just so say, you... this, is, this is very racist against northern women. At the moment. Yeah. Well, you said they had hairy balls. balls a second ago. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> 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 okay, what do you think? Six three percent of northern women have untangled a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday yes. night on an ITV. absolutely fiendish mystery. Most of the top detectives are northern women. That's a fact. It's another fact. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Something it. Fern Britain has probably done. <laughs> Eaten far too much food. <laughs> it's a very specific food stuff, and it's in one sitting. Lard. <laughs> right, 63% of northern women have eaten a whole packet of Jaffa cakes and they don't give a shit. No! <laughs> I'll give you that, close enough. <laughs> 63% of, of northern women have eaten an entire packet of biscuits in one go. Well, you've got to finish the pack before you get to the checkout and we have to pay for them. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that round, Sean, Chris and David have four points, Jason, June and Michael have three points. Yeah. Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I'll give panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is tell me whether they think it's true or false. Let's have a look at a clip. You are what you eat. One of the easiest ways of increasing our fibre is to switch to wholemeal bread. All kinds of people are doing it. 
the baker looks like yeah. <laughs> and also explains how I got that yeast infection <laughs> uh, that was you are what you eat in 1986 here's your question 85% of women say cooking is the most important skill they look for in a partner I yeah. think you've missed out the word obese before women <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you're watching this and you're obese put that down fatty <laughs> Eat up on. What Absolute do you think? rubbish. What do you look for in a partner? I don't know many women that say, oh, he's really good at cooking. Maybe you were misheard him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you look for in a, right. in a man? Fat face. <laughs> Even fatter face. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> this statistic is a little bit weird because a lot of McDonald's staff are single. At no point does a woman go, oh, you've got five stars. Let me take my knickers off. You know what, I mean? <laughs> what, you're on the fryer? Have a touch of these. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that women look for skill. Continence is a skill. Isn't what, sorry? It? I'm teaching my three year old how to be continent. 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 Isn't that it? Incon yeah. con no, continent. Michael yeah, that's there. a word, yeah. Here in the village, Michael, we call it potty training. <laughs> <laughs> down that's here, I mean, up in the right? castle, you might call it that. But down here in the village, we call it potty training. Then we never let everyone know. <laughs> I mean, normally they always go, I like someone with a good sense of humour, yes. don't they? And it'd be good if you could to combine the two, cooking and a good sense of humour. Yeah. <laughs> the chef from the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so 85% of women say cooking is the most important skill they look for in a partner. What, what are you going to go with? Um, it's false, it's absolutely false. Absolutely it's a nonsense. false. Are you saying true or false? Chris Moores, what do you think? True or false? It's false. It's false. OK, you're going false? Yeah. Right. I can tell you the answer is... I haven't answered yet, and I haven't seen the captain. All so. right. <laughs> Sometimes I take my role as a captain very seriously. <laughs> it's one of those occasions. David, what do you think? I think it's false. You think it's false? Chris, you think it's false? I do. I've got a weird sneaking suspicion. It's true. OK, well, I can tell you the answer is false. <laughs> <laughs> Of women say cooking is what they look for in a man. When my girlfriend Amir in the kitchen, things get pretty steamy. We haven't got an extractor fan. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round is four points for Sean's team and four points for Jason's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here was your first one. Britain's most ridiculous law. <laughs> is it Jude Law? <laughs> It's not Jude Law, it's not Sod's Law, it's not Murphy's Law. Is it Sod's Law? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I love that. Murphy's Law. <laughs> There's one for pregnant women, isn't there? That they are allowed to ask a policeman, if they're in a public place, that they can urinate in his helmet. Does he yeah. have to say yes, or can he... He has to say yes. You have to... You're allowed to pee in his helmet. He, does, he, doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to put it back on afterwards. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to put it back on slowly, going, harump. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is a law... I hope someone else has heard of this, that you can kill a Scotsman in Nottingham if he has a bow and arrow. <laughs> Sorry, when you said, I hope someone else has heard of this, have you killed a Scotsman in Nottingham? <laughs> It's a place where you can't die. A place where you can't die? Yeah. Well, there is a place in England where oh, it's illegal. I know this. It's, um, you're not allowed to die in the... Is it the Parliament? Houses of Parliament? That is the correct answer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. That's a true thing. Britain's most ridiculous law is it's illegal to die in the Houses of Parliament. Another strange law is pregnant women can urinate anywhere they want. Great news, I think my nana's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> 
world's most disappointing tourist attraction. There's one just outside Middlesbrough, and it's a butterfly world. And the thing is, it's like a humidified environment. So I walk in, and my glasses just steamed up. Yeah, that's what happens in butterfly Just completely world. steamed yeah, up. Yeah. And I freaked out. I went, ah, ah, <laughs> ah! And I killed about 12 very rare species. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in, went, ah, ah, ah! <laughs> Auschwitz. <laughs> oh. The rides are shit. <laughs> I'm Jewish, I'm alright. I think that means I can say it. Is it? I think so. <laughs> Is it Blackpool? And my dad used to drive us, he's got narcolepsy, my dad. He'd get in the car, he'd drive, right? Yeah. He'd get in the car and he'd go, right, lads, if you hear this noise, wake me up. <laughs> and you'd be driving to Blackpool, you're like, dad, dad, I'm all right, I'm only winding you up, I'm only up. <laughs> you get there, you're like, I don't want to go on any rides, just see yourself. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Hasn't put me off him at all. <laughs> the fact that he falls asleep, in fact, it's made it more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get my hands on your sleepy dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. OK. World's most disappointing tourist attraction. Is it the Eiffel Tower? You're absolutely right. Disappointing tourist attraction in the world is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is the most pointless Thank erection you. since I went on a date with Martina Navratilova. <laughs> <laughs> that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, David and Chris have four points, but the winners are Jason, June and Michael with six points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. We're back in six weeks with a new series.